Hey y'all, welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard. So tonight we're going to play, teach, and do all those things with arguably the most opaque game that I personally and maybe everybody here has ever played. We're, a few of us are uh, experienced PAX players, both previous system as well as this one. That said, there's a reason that Mike is wearing a red shirt tonight. So we're playing PAX Renaissance, designed by Matt and Phil Eklund, and published by their own company, which is Sierra Madre Games. So yeah, I mentioned opacity. Uh, get ready for it. It's it's going to be it's going to be hard to grok. Is I think uh, genuinely the, the 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 best way I know how to put it. So before we get it started, there's a reason this guy ain't teaching tonight. So obviously I'm Edward from Heavy Cardboard. Next to me is not my beautiful wife and co-host. <laughs> However, it is it is Dan from other previous streams. Hey. Uh, Part of our local group, obviously. We have Ash, who was gracious enough to be willing to teach and brave this puppy tonight. So. Hello again! <laughs> and our token red shirt from uh, Star Trek. That, that, that is a very interesting rock, out, rock outcropping, Captain. I think I'll go investigate by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, get ready. Uh, so a couple of caveats before I hand it over to Ash. None of us are experts at this. I have played the game, I think, six times. Seven or eight, I think. Uh, allegedly twice. <laughs> okay. I think this is my fifth. Okay. Yeah. None of us are experts. We're far from it. And to be honest with you, I still struggle with this game. And I'm five, six games into this. So if you're looking for high-level play, that's the other stream. That's not this one. <laughs> what we're going to try and do tonight, though, is play it competently and explain it. We're going to go less rules overhead on the front end uh, and do some of the explorations, thanks, uh, some of the explanations later on uh, as they come up for the simple fact that it would just be an absolute information overload if it wasn't that way. Wouldn't you agree, Ash? I would think so. And um, really the, the best way that we can do it is talk about the the topics in the terms that the game rule book presents and then play through it and kind of act it out as we go. Okay, so before I switch over to the main camera, um, we're not going to interact with the chat during the teaching. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it and we'll go from there. Wow, I did that all on the wrong side, didn't I? All right, good call. Just Thanks. mostly. Um, the other things that's gonna go on tonight is everyone's tableau is not going to be in camera. Uh, mine will be uh, when I switch cameras for the simple fact that we want to be able to zoom in tight enough on this to where you guys can see the board and actually see the market cards. Um, and then when we do ops, and Ash will explain all that here in a little bit, we'll actually zoom the camera out so you guys can see the different players doing it. If it's me, I actually have a camera for my Tableau specifically so you guys will be able to see that. Um, yeah, I think that's... Yep. That's good enough. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead, switch it over to the main camera, and Ash, Godspeed. Thank you. Uh, for the brief premise of the game, I'm just going to go straight from the rule book, um, as Phil and Matt Eklund write. In Pax Renaissance, as a Renaissance banker, you will finance kings or republics, sponsor voyages of discovery, join secret cabals, or unleash jihads and inquisitions. Your choices determine if Europe is elevated into the bright modern era or remains festering in dark feudalism. Four victories determine the future course of Western society. Will it be towards imperialism, trade globalization, religious totalitarianism, or enlightened art and science? So, with that out of the way, each player in Pax Renaissance, two to four, is one of the banking families from medieval Europe. Uh, I'll start by discussing the table itself, kind of the anatomy of all the cards and pieces that are out, uh, talk about the, the things you can do on your turn, two actions, and finally to the anatomy of the cards, the play cards that you'll interact with, and then, like Edward said, kind of gloss over, deliberately so, um, some of the details therein, because we'll get to it as we play. So, first... You have the map cards, which depict Europe during the medieval era. 
Each card represents a region of Europe. They have a name, such as England, France, Holy Roman Empire. They have cities, capital cities like London, or minor cities such as Modon here in the Ottoman Empire. They also have pieces on them that you'll see, and the piece names in Pax Renaissance uh, have a rough analog to the pieces in a game of chess. And so here on the map you will see knights, you will see cylinders, which are rooks. Uh, knights represent the armed ruling class of an area, and rooks represent the uh, nobility, the ruling nobility of an area. You'll also see that they, are, that they come in different colors, uh, representing the religious flavor uh, of that particular piece. Catholic knights in France, Muslim knights in Constantinople, and later in the game uh, there will come red pieces, which roughly in the West uh, equate to Protestants, and roughly in the East equate to the pagans, uh, or rather the non-Christians in the area. There you go. <laughs> Um, the other piece, the other things you'll see on the cards, the cards themselves um, have an icon uh, depicting that's indicative of that area, uh, each one different. On the flip side of that card, so this is called the medieval side of the card, on the flip side is the theocracy side of the card. And with the, the caveat or the note that two cards, the Papal States and Mameluke, are always in a state of theocracy. It's simply a question of what flavor theocracy. Uh, the other things you see are the lines and arrows on the maps. And so here's a black line starting in Tana. That is, in fact, a black line. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> starting in Tana and wiggling away uh, down here to Mamluk. And you see the, the arrow head pointing the direction of the line. Uh, the white line starting in uh, Trebizond and flowing all the way through the Mediterranean, up through the Atlantic, and uh, ending in the Holy Roman Empire. These represent the trade routes during medieval Europe, and their direction never changes, but their origination can. For instance, the black trade route starts in Tana, but may change to Timbuktu, or it may change to Novgorod. Uh, that'll happen, may happen, may not, uh, in the course of the game. The white trade route starts in Trebizond and flows all the way through the Mediterranean or might change to the Spice Islands. And uh, go in the same direction. And go correct. in the same direction, correct. Yeah. So the white trade route is always going clockwise. Uh, the black trade route, roughly speaking, is always going counterclockwise. It's just a question of if it's short or long. Uh, those are the trade routes. So we've covered pieces on the map cards, but you also see that there are colored cubes between the map cards. And Pieces can go on the map cards or between the map cards, and each of the borders between a card is a valid border uh, for pieces to occupy. In this case, these cubes are the pawns of the game. When they're between two map tiles, they represent a trade concession. Uh, within the theme of the game, it's kind of the merchants who are working between those two regions of Europe. Um, later on, there may be rooks that go... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, later on, there may be rooks that go in those spaces between Arrgh. map tiles, and those are the pirates. I uh, should have a patch. Oh, <laughs> dang it. You have the striped shirt and everything. I know, seriously. And tattoos, you can right? make yes, your sir. tattoos Arrgh. dance, right? <laughs> um, the last piece I've kind of covered, but I'll go ahead and explicitly state it. Uh, the trade root origination, the term, the game term that you need, and... I'm using the game terms as much as I can because the rule book uh, in the very back is an alphabetical glossary. And so it's very easy to go look up the term if you know the term. Um, <laughs> the, the trade routes originate in an emporia. And so the last piece you see is this little disc marking that that trade it's emporia is busted, busted in, the, in, the, in the game terms. Again, that may change, but it might not. There's a whole stack of cards and a whole stack more that were uh, weeded out in part of the setup of the game. Um, oh, that's all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that's just the map. <laughs> so that's the map part of the table. The other parts of the table you see, here are the four victory conditions alluded to in the introduction of the game. Right now, you may see they are inactive. They may be activated during the course of the game. And real quick, let me go ahead and uh, interrupt real quick and let you all know, if you're not on 1080p 60, oh. 
if you can do so because that it's going to make it that much clearer because obviously there's a lot of information in a small area so that'll help you guys all right cool continue sorry uh, sir. thanks so on the table you have the map you have the four possible victory conditions may or may not be activated during the course of the game um and and again those four are the imperial victory which is having empires in your tableau the globalization victory, which namely is having more concessions on the board and having ship icons in your tableau. The renaissance victory, which is having republics in your tableau and having law, law icons in your tableau. And the last... I'm just going to say, grab it for him so oh. that I didn't have oh. to reach so far, that's all. Hey, I'm teaching. It's okay. You're good, you're good. I'm trying I'm here to learn. To learn. Right. <laughs> and the last being the holy victory, which generally speaking is having more prestige in the preeminent religion than anyone else. And how that's determined is very, very small pr fine print in the rule book. And I, I actually line these out. In the order that, like, easiest to arguably hardest to rock. I would, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. So I agree with that. Uh, and we'll go into more detail with those once we once we kind of get past the basics. Uh, the other basics of the table anatomy. Um, we have the other spare pieces off camera, uh, but okay. generally speaking, knights, rooks. Oh, here I'll, I'll take and care bishops of, that. Here. of the. Oh, thank Look you. Knights, rooks, and bishops of the three of the three colors slash religious flavors right. available in the game. They are functionally identical. Uh, merely, it's how the game interacts with those different colors throughout the game. Um, the other part of the table we haven't covered yet are the empires. This is called the empire stack. And so what these represent, there's one card for each map area, and that's the empire that rules over that part of the map. And so these are empires that can, and if you're playing it well, will come into your tableau as a kingdom and possibly later as a republic. They have two, oops, there, there we go. go. Yeah. We have two sides to the cards and you know they're the king because of the crown. Uh, to continue the, uh, the kind of chess analogy, these are the kings, uh, which you, it may require a, king, a queen to capture. Uh, suffice to say that there's one empire for each of the regions. Uh, you try to get it in your tableau and that, as we alluded to, is the most direct route to victory uh, via the imperial uh, victory condition. Yep. The last part of the table we haven't discussed yet are the markets. Arguably the most important. The most important because these are the cards you'll actually be buying and playing and using to interact with the whole world of the map and the empires and your opponents too. It's how you do stuff. Right. It's how you do stuff. So here we have the east trade route, here we have the west trade route, and they are a conveyor of cards available to be purchased. Actually and, flowing right to left. Uh, sorry, so, excuse me. Yeah, so yeah, 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 the conveyor is flowing this way. Yes. Um, we'll get into the details of that when, when we discuss the cards themselves. But suffice to say, there's a stack of cards for the East Trade Route and there's a stack of cards for the West Trade Route. So that's what's on the table. <laughs> so the, the one thing that oh, is yeah, not, thank you. real quick, so this, I wanted to leave this out and show you guys. This is the expansion, which a lot of people are really big fans of. We haven't played with it yet because we're only like five, six games into it. Yeah. So as you can see, it's still in the shrink. So yeah, we'll get rid of that. Whoop, problem solved. All right, moving on. <laughs> okay, so as I said previously, on your turn, you will get to take two actions. And so those two actions might be purchase a card from the market into your hand. We'll go through how that happens. Remember, for my own sake, for everyone else's, for your sake, Commander, your hand limit is two you, cards. You have two hands. Ergo, you, <laughs> you have, have a hand cards. limit of two. Right. Remember, 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 because I always forget. Yes. So, you might purchase a card from the market into your hand. You may play a card from your hand into your tableau. And here I'll show folks so they can see. that. So, my tableau here is set up to where this is my banker and my... Your fortune money. right yep. now the tableaus are going to come out here and then we'll go from there so so suffice to say on your turn you can purchase a card from the market into your hand you can play a card from your hand to your tableau uh, you may conduct a trade fair either in the east trade route or in the west trade route and note 
that can only be done once on a particular player's turn. As Either the east to. or the west. You can't do it as both of your actions. Next is to run the tableau ops uh, for your tableau, either in the east or in the west, and that's another action that's limited to once per turn. That's probably gibberish to you, unless you've already played or have read the rule book extensively, <laughs> but suffice to say, that's the main way to interact with the game, is running the ops on your tableau. And we'll walk you guys through it when we actually when we're doing go it. through it. When, yeah. when it'll actually mean something. Right. Um, you can sell a card out of your hand or out of your tableau for two florins. Um, and under edge case, it might be more, but generally speaking, you're selling a card out of your tableau for two florins per card. Uh, lastly, it takes one of your two actions to claim victory, and so you must actually have things arranged and set up so that you have that spare action to claim victory, or whoop, some red shirt might go and take it from you. Yep. And that's one of the, for those that are familiar with games like Pax Porfiriana, that is a major difference between the two, that it hmm. actually requires an action, and that has tripped us up number, uh, numerous times, mm -hmm. I should say. Mentally, mentally, you yeah. know, you, you get things set up, you All get right, arranged. I'm ready to, I don't have enough actions right. to claim victory. Exactly. It's got to wait until it comes back that. around, and then things have changed. Oh, yep. the world can be a different place on your next turn. Yes, that is for sure. Uh, so, that brings us to... The anatomy of the market cards themselves. And these, from now on, I'll just call the cards because these are the cards that you're mainly interacting with. And actually, I'll go ahead and sure. we'll bring them over. Can I set it here? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, this card, all the cards uh, in the game you'll be playing with have a name and a whole paragraph of flavor text, which is amazing it to is. get to learn. It is. It's like taking a college class in medieval Europe. It's awesome. So, the card has a name, picture, flavor text. Over on the left, uh, the brown banner indicates the agent that the card usually uh, will allow you to bring into the game. The card also shows a one-shot action that is optional for you to take when you play the card. And lastly, at the bottom, the card depicts uh, icons for the operations or the ops uh, that you may run when you run ops where that card exists in, in your tableau. And so here's another good example. Um, the card I picked just happened to be a queen. And so there you may be able to see the queen icon. There's, there's the last piece, uh, second to last piece in our chess analogy. This card shows a pawn and shows a little colored cube to indicate that whoever plays that card and chooses to place that agent places a cube of their own color. So that's all nice, but how does all of this work? Right. Um, too bad I'll have to explain it to you as we go. Um, I'm kidding. Sort of. <laughs> kind of, but not sort exactly. Of. Half kidding. Right. Uh, so, suffice to say that when you play a card from your hand to your tableau, you may execute the one shot. Which the one shot is, uh, and this oh, took me oh, three sorry, games to understand, that's a bomb yeah. right there if you guys did, because... I was slow. I didn't realize oh. it. It's a bomb icon, meaning it's a one shot. It happens, it happens. the moment you right. play it if you wish to execute it. That said, if you don't wish to execute the one shot when you play the card, the chance is gone. Uh, and actually, uh, card anatomy I skipped because I happened to pull a queen uh, is the location uh, on the card itself. And that indicates where the card interacts with the game. It may be a single map tile, such as Portugal, England, France, or it may be an, a region of the board of the map, the west, which is these six western cards, or the east, those eastern four cards. Uh, thanks for pulling that extra No card. worries. Um, the card also on the very, very bottom indicates where in your tableau it goes when you play it to your tableau. Um, they say west. Oh, I'm fooling with the focus. Sorry. Um, <laughs> they'll say west or east in very small print on the bottom. The queen, incidentally, doesn't because of... Queens are kind of a special piece in the game. Uh, so, just to cover the kinds of one-shots that are available for you to optionally take when you play the card into your tableau, it may be a coronation, which is only on queens, and is the easiest and most direct route to acquire an empire into your tableau, is the coronation. That's with the queens. It'll say right here uh, which, which empires are available for you to bring into your tableau. Uh, the conspiracy one-shot which is a kind of civil war, and that's civil war is kind of a special term within the game. 
Uh, peasant revolt is another kind of civil war in the game, and what those are depends on who participates in a conspiracy or a civil war. A religious war uh, is another one-shot, and the last kind of one-shot is a trade shift. Um, and again, with the one-shots, when you play your card to your tableau, you either do it or you don't. Uh, another kind of one-off part of the card when you play it to your tableau are the agents. Back it up. Sure. Apparently we're, we're getting some lag. Okay. Um, you know what? Give us a second, guys. We'll be right back. We'll see if we can take... Good. Then I will turn. All right, guys. Sorry about that. All right. Hopefully that should take care of it. All right. Cool. All right, Ash, you want to continue where we were? Sorry you bet. about that. Sorry about the lag, everyone. Uh, just to make sure that we cover the whole topic again, I'm going to start with card anatomy from the top. So, the cards in the market are the main cards that you'll be buying into your hand, playing into your tableau, and using to interact with the game world. All the cards have these pieces or these parts in common. They have a title. They have a nice little picture. They have a paragraph of flavor text, which is awesome. It's so much detail of the medieval world, and it's reading through these uh, flavor text on the card is almost like a college class in medieval Europe. It's right. just the best. We're not going to do that on the stream tonight, but yes, if you get a copy, highly recommend it. <laughs> you can read it like a book. If you notice me squinting at a card, it's because I'm reading the flavor text of a card I've not yet seen in my seven or eight plays. Uh, so they have a title, they have the flavor text, they have... Uh, Icons for your operations, uh, once it's in your tableau. They have a one-shot, which you have the option to execute when you play the card from your hand to your tableau. Uh, at the bottom, you have the region that that card uh, acts upon. It might be a particular region, in this case, Mamluk, or it may be a whole section of the map. Uh, for instance, this card that says the, the West, West, which, by the way, the West is this, these six Western cards. The East is those four Eastern cards. So, um, and then at the very bottom in fine print, uh, the card will show you with words and an arrow which side of your tableau it is played into when you play it from your hand to your tableau. The West, the East, I think they mostly, mostly, mostly align with which a market you purchase the card from. East cards almost always go to your East tableau. West cards almost always go to your West tableau. There we go. So, uh, the last part of the card anatomy is up here, this brown banner, the agent, that that card gives you the option to place into the map. Um, suffice to say, uh, we won't go through all the details of the one-shots and the agents and the ops right now, yep. but suffice to say, when you play a card from your hand to your tableau, you have the option to execute the one-shot, if present, not all cards have one, most do, uh, to execute the one-shot, and that usually brings into play the agent listed on the card. So you have the option to use the one-shot, which brings the agent into play. If you do not execute the one-shot, you then have the option to bring the agent into play. Anyway. Anyways. Right. Um, and then once the card is in your tableau, when you run ops, you will be running an op one of the operations on each card in that tableau, east or west. Yep. Um, and that's basically it, other than the actual names of the one-shots we'll be encountering. Um, and I think the names of the ops. Explaining those as we go. As we go. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, like I said at the beginning, it's a really opaque game. It's going to be one of those... Oh, that makes sense now type things for hopefully for y'all watching at home. And if it makes anyone feel better, I'm on, I, I need to check my number of plays that I've logged, assuming that I've logged them all. Seven or eight. We're still using these player aids. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, awesome player aids that are available on BGG. Yep. Um, there's, there's a number of them uh, and they all do something a little different. Some have the iconography on them. Some are just text. Um, and also... Uh, uh, Phil Eklund has a scan of the rulebook on BGG, in addition to the living rules, which is a Google Doc that was updated, I think, like three days ago or something I saw they, when I was they, looking at it. Yeah, they're pretty good about that. Um, so. Suffice to say, when you're following along, uh, before you kind of know all the details and guts of the game, the Tableau Ops come in different flavors based on their color. Religious are blue, economic are gold, political are purple, and military are red. Are red. And with that, 
I think we're ready to play the game and kind of teach as we go. I think so. Um, I yeah. am I am the banking family of the Fuggers, which whenever they are in play, they are the first player. Right. Um, so excuse me while I look at what <laughs> what cards are actually available for All right, me to so play. While you do while you take a look at okay. the market, uh, Mike, who who do you represent? What what family of banker? Uh, I represent the Kurbank of Alexandria. All right, and, uh, and yeah, Dan. The Marchi Marchioni? Marchioni? Go with it. Bank of Lisbon. All right. The Portuguese. I am the Medici, which, I mean, everybody knows who the Medici are. I mean, they have their own game, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 By the way, the Fuggers replaced, supplanted the Medici as the wealthiest banking family in Europe. Right. All right. So, right. so, so the Fuggers are first, and we should note that uh, they start with three... Uh, Florin. Florins, and then it's clockwise around the table from there. Right. How it worked, it just so happened that I ended up with six because three, four, five, and six. Right. And so uh, I noted in the chat, uh, some folks pointed out, we didn't actually talk about the money. Here's the money. Uh, they're Florins in the game. And that's what these are? The, the reds are fives? Right. <laughs> so. So, one of the two actions on your turn can be buying a card from the market. And so... Uh, the way that works is you take your florins and you start by placing one on the market card for the market from which you're buying a card. You then place another on the next card. And in this case, I'm buying this card, uh, the Sophia Palaiologina. Uh, I'm buying the second the card of the market. <laughs> right. I'm right. buying this queen All right. into my hand. Okay. So, so that's one action. So that's one action. And since that took, uh, oh, sorry, y'all can't see that. Since that took all but most of my money, I'm now going to play that card there from my go. hand. Now there we go. can see that took almost all of your money. Almost all there the money. We go. There we go. Uh, I'm now going to play the card uh, to my tableau. And so the way this Actually, works. Actually, I will. So folks yeah, can here see we go. this. There you go. All right. So I'm playing the card to my tableau. It's a queen. The one shot is the coronation one shot. I'm absolutely going to do it. That's the main reason to play queens. Uh, the coronation gives you the option of different empires to uh, bring into your tableau. And in this case, I think I'm going to bring in the what Holy Roman... What are your Roman options? Oh, sorry. Uh, my options are Hungary, uh, Byzantium, and the Holy Roman Empire. And I'm going to pick the Holy Roman Empire here. So he goes into the empire stack, I... he grabs the king. And on the king side, you then uh, lay add the card to your tableau in what the rulebook calls the cruciform... Uh, uh, layout. And so thus, the queen card and the king card go into your tableau together. And why did you switch sides right there? And the reason is because you'll notice the queen does not have that little handy piece at the bottom telling you which tableau they go into. That's dictated by which empire you choose to coronate. Which side she, you do who so. she marries. Who she marries, exactly. She married the uh, king of the Holy Roman Empire, Frederick III, and so Frederick is in the West Tableau. And so there, now my Holy Roman Empire is in my West Tableau. The last thing you do on your turn is the market refresh, and that's simply advancing the conveyor belt of cards so, to refill the market. And that's both your actions. You purchase the card, and then you play the card. That's it. Boom, done. Now it's Mike's turn. All right, sweater Mike. Here we go. Start, I'm going to buy a card starting on the East Trade Fair, and I'm buying the, the Crim Horde. The, the Grim first. Horde. There in you the go. First, uh, oh, in the first slot in the conveyor. Easy. All right. I get the florin that's on it. Yep. Card comes into my hand, and then I'm going to put it into play. Sorry. The east side. The east side. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're so gangster. I am All so. Right. You have uh, no idea. All right. So when it goes into play, you can do the one shot if you wish. The conspiracy. Does that come before the, it the deployment? It does. The conspiracy is first if you wish to. All right, so I'm going to work through the conspiracy. Sure, the conspiracy. Read, yeah, go for it. There's, there's, I think that would be helpful for folks. All right, so a conspiracy is a form of civil war. Conspiracy involves a force of attackers versus a force of defenders. The attackers comprise all the agents on the card, which is one trade concession. One pawn at, one, at mm -hmm. this point. Right. Mm -hmm. 
uh, plus every repressed knight and rook in that empire. Which there are none yet because that none. empire is not out, so there was no chance for them to be repressed yet. Right. Okay. Plus any pirates bordering that territory, of which there are none okay. in either of these two sea lanes, versus all the knights and the rooks on the card. Mm -hmm. So of which there is one. So, so it's one to one. It would be one to one. Both would die. It would be an unsuccessful conspiracy. Yes. Because there must be one attacker minimum left over once the attack is complete. For it to be victorious. Right. Whatever the kind of battle it is, conspiracy, peasant revolt, religious war, etc. Correct. And the pawns are attackers? They can be if they're an agent on oh, that oh, particular card. I did yes. not realize yep. that. Yeah. Right. So I will decline to execute my conspiracy. Interesting note, though. He would have the option, even if it would be unsuccessful, the fact that he would be, if he had further plans right. to want to kill off the uh, the knight there uh -huh. to then further... Yeah, the effect is that it weakens the Byzantine Empire, which may play into his plans, maybe doesn't. Right. And we'll see about suborning the, uh, the Black Knight there in the Byzantine Empire in a future turn. All right, so declining conspiracy and having Ash remind me that I am playing the blue team, <laughs> <laughs> I will deploy a blue trade concession along this line right here. Now, he could place it at the bottom or on the side. It makes sense because when we run trade fairs, concessions get paid. Right. And now because both of the trade fairs go through that card mm -hmm. or through that gap, he's going to get paid regardless, and he's going to get paid first regardless of who runs the trade fair. Generally speaking, you want to be on the trade route, if at all possible. All right, those are my two actions. Nice turn. Slide Ash, the conveyor. Did you put a concession out for your king? I did not put a concession out. Oh, Thanks. please do so. I'll yep. do so. When, when Ash took the king, go ahead, you explain it. During any kind of regime change, be it coronation, successful conspiracy, uh, what have you, regime change is the term of art in the rule book. Uh, you have the opportunity to place a trade concession bordering that empire. I already have this trade concession here, so I'm not going to uh, uh, repress. I'm not going to repress, replace, repress yeah. it with my own. <laughs> so instead, I'll put it here instead. Um, they're both they're both land borders. Just to talk through the thinking, they're both land borders. Um, this helps me in possibly more areas than than that does. Yep. Oh, in a in a civil war you can pull those trade concessions to battle inward toward the Holy Roman Empire and this one can uh, also then go into the Papal States? Uh, not with a civil war, but in some of the cases the concessions uh, take part. The conspiracies. I'll let possibly. you read through it yeah, while Dan mind. goes. Go ahead. Right. Okay. I will be purchasing... One to each market. Everybody's color. going wow. to the east side. Huh? To me, this is okay. fascinating that we're all playing east right now. Okay. East heavy. All I right. Will, so I will and I don't, I'm, I'm not going to uh, keep zooming in and zooming out. So why don't we do this? Sure. Whenever you buy a card, just explain what it is you're going. If cool. you're gonna, if you're going to play the card, absolutely. We'll do it. That I'm way. going to play it immediately. This is a coronation one shot. Um, so I can use this queen to get the Mamluk. Byzantium or Ottoman Empire. Oh, geez. Okay. So I will take... Yep. Yep, the yep. Ottoman. Yep. So that goes on the east side of my tableau, and right. I get to place a concession. Correct. Nicely done. So I will repress that concession. All right, so now by replacing... A concession, you're repre repressing it. So whenever you have, whenever you play a concession or an agent, you have the option to repress a piece that is already there. And so Dan's choosing to repress Mike's trade concession bordering the Ottoman Empire. When you repress a piece on playing it as an agent, um, in this case, it's the agent of the king um, or the king card, you pay a florin to do so. So he pays one to China, which is, i.e., the bank, the supply. Right. And then... The repressed that... piece actually goes onto the Empire card in the tableau, in whosever tableau it is. If it's, not, if it's still in the Empire stack and it's not in someone's tableau yet, it's just discarded. Meaning it goes back into their supply. Right. All right. And yeah. then we refresh so the market magic. and continue. There we go. All right. I suppose I ought to take a look as well. I've had all day. I set this up earlier today, and you would have thought I would have looked this over. You should definitely I did not. have a strategy by now. Right. You would think so. 
Um, so let's see here. Just taking a look at the markets. Oh, excuse me. Help, help. I'm being repressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at what's out there. I, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. If I were to run the East trade route, how that would work is you always take two florins from China, mm -hmm. add them onto the uh, trade route card, whatever side you're running. In this case, if I'm considering the East side. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm considering... Oh, never mind, I'm not considering. Uh, it would be the West side because my concession uh, is way over here next to the pa uh, Papal States. The concession would pay me one for... Or, I'm sorry, the trade route would pay me one for mm -hmm. initiating the trade route. And then following along down here, it would pay that concession one coming back around. It would then pay me a, sec uh, a second one. The problem is there's no money out here. And if it only added two and I get one off the top, all I'm doing is feeding Mike. Right. And we don't want to do that because we, we like Mike, but we don't like Mike that much. Don't, don't feed the red shirt. No, not so much. So instead, I am... A bit like a gremlin in that way. Uh, I cried. You very, know what? I'm going to like actually go ahead and purchase a card here on the West Trade Route. Uh, or on the, I'm sorry, in the West Tableau. I'm going to choose the, uh, the Peasant Republic of... Oh, boy. Good luck. Dith Martian. Nice. Yeah, we'll yeah, go with it. All right, cool. So then I'm going to play, play the Peasant Republic of Dith Martian, which is in the West, meaning I can deploy this concession anywhere here in the West. Mm -hmm. So what makes the most sense for me to do, again, the West being these six cards, what am I thinking here? Trade route's good. Get upstream on the trade route. Right. Uh, meaning get closer to the beginning. To the origination. Right. right. So that there, there's less money on the trade routes, you'll get paid still. Yeah. So I'm looking around out here, and I, I'm going to go short-sighted. No, nope, I'm not. I was considering putting it on the, uh, the east side go. of the Papal State, but because the Ottoman Empire is out, I would prefer to just protect my concession and hmm. just keep it away from that. So I'm actually going to go in between Aragon and Portugal there, and it's still on the West Trade Route there. So I will play this to my tableau, and now finally I can show you guys what this <laughs> looks like. So, there all right, go. so here we go. So, oh, let me fix the chat on this real quick, y'all. All right. Uh, all right, there it goes. Wow, it's struggling tonight, the software is. All right, so it's on the West, so it goes on the West side, so... Easy enough. There we go. So when I trigger it, I can choose to do a peasant revolt. I elect not to. There's no reason to. There's, yeah. there, there's no reason to. Um, and I get to place an agent, which is a pawn, meaning a concession. So I will choose to place one concession out here in the west. So then going back to the main board, boom, I've already done that, and that went right there. Mm -hmm. That's both of my actions. Nice turn. We slide the tableau. And now, first player, that type thing doesn't matter at this point. It's the fugger. Right. And clockwise, from there out until the game ends. We prefer the Bank of Augsburg. I apologize. <laughs> Carry on, sir. Carry on. All so, right. uh, I'm going to, no cards in hand, buy a card from the, t uh, from the market, take the floor in with it, and I'm going to... Oh, I should probably actually see what this card is. While you're thinking, uh, the chat here. Um, yep, I appreciate And guys, the those of y'all in chat that know the game real well, German Mike and etc. cetera, uh, we appreciate y'all. Dylan back there, um, we appreciate the help so that we can try and focus more on this because this is a uh, brain burning game. So cool. All right, good deal. So the card that I purchased and I'm going to play is Damascus Coffee. Uh, it has a conspiracy I'm not going to use. Mainly it uh, has the East Commerce, which the East Market is quite rich. But as Edward was saying, I don't want to go giving either of these jokers any money. I'm instead going to use this card in the future for its Commerce Op uh, to take money out of the market, which you'll see how that works when we actually do it. So I bought a card, I played a card, and we advanced the market. All right. Uh, Man Jr. says a peasant revolt could grab me Aragon. It can now, it couldn't at the time because a peasant result, or, I'm sorry, a 
Hmm? Oh, actually... No, yeah, because your concessions are part of the peasant revolt. Oh, we could have. It could have. My yeah. bad. All right. Like I said, it's not going to be optimal play tonight, mm -hmm. <laughs> so bear with it. But yes, I could have taken over uh, Aragon in my with my action, so my bad. Mike, you're up. And a couple people have pointed oh. out that um, pawns do not take part in conspiracies. Not conspiracies, but, but peasant in a peasant revolt, revolt okay. your okay. concessions exactly. right. are part okay. of the peasant I misunderstood right. what you yep. said. Okay. Um, my Damascus coffee comes with an agent. I'm going to play the Black Rook to Mamluk. Not repressing anything, just trying to shore it up against the aggressive uh, posturing of... Uh, the Ottomans. Of the Ottomans. Or the Marquis. The Bank of Lisbon. The Bank of Lisbon. The Lisbonese. I can pronounce Lisbon. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the one word on the cards out here that I'm comfortable with. All right. So if you guys have questions... The chat will take care of it, or we will. So work me through this. Okay. This card right here. Suppose I take this card. It's a Zupi! white. It's Zupi a Kirkowski. White knight in Hungary, which doesn't have a space for a white knight. It still can be placed there on top of the. That's red a good one. point. Yes. So the agents, the agent pieces that can be played onto the map, which is knights and rooks onto the map cards themselves. They're placed onto cities where you see the outline of a piece. Um, you may choose to repress the piece there, even if it's the same color. Hmm. If it, if it, oh, you may choose to do so. Or you may place the agent in one of the empty spaces, or you may simply not place the agent. Um, the pieces that are printed on the map relate to uh, not only the starting setup, which is the capital cities, as in all capitals, uh, and also the pieces printed on the board uh, relate to what piece goes there when a levy occurs. And a levy can occur in two different ways, either the tax op or when a trade fair is run. Right, and, and what, we'll, we'll touch we'll, on it. We'll deal with that when it gets there. Um, All right, so Mike? I'll slide my tableau. He, he, yeah, I, it's a, it looks like you're a buck short. Whatever it, it is does. you're trying to do, you're a buck short. <laughs> it, it is. I am, in fact, a florin short. Yes. So I'm going to start right at the front here and take this card. Hey, hang on, Zupe. Zupe, hang on. Yeah. I know, it's terrible. There we go. So do you want to show the, show the board the card that you're Zupe. playing? We'll do that. So here's Zupe. Uh, peasant Revolt. So we can hold a Peasant Revolt in Hungary again. All right. Which Hungary would not... That would... That It'd be one would. on one. No, well, it wouldn't. Your concession participates in a peasant revolt, and I so mean, it would be really? two on one. And so you could get hungry. So learn from my mistake, Mike. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. And I can choose to have this agent and this one die, and my trade concession remain. You could. You may choose that you prefer for your map for your newly acquired empire to have some. Uh, defense, All which right. is namely the pieces on the map card. On the map card. And so you may choose that the, uh, the of your two attacking pieces, so let's go ahead and mock it out here. If you were to activate the Peasant Revolt, it would be this knight, the agent on the card, and your bordering trade concessions here, versus uh, all the pieces on the map card of the Empire, which in this case is one knight. And so your two to that one, you would choose which one of the attackers dies. You might choose that. And it's a one-to-one. -one. It's, it's always yeah, it's one always on, uh, one attack. Any one kind defense, of battle right. is always one-to-one, -one. right? And mm -hmm. so you may choose that it's your concession, so that when you take Hungary from the Empire stack, that then comes back out. Right. right. Well, so and actually, you can choose where it goes. That is right. exactly what we're going to do. So All this right. one dies, right? Okay. It Come does on. because Hungary is not in play, right? Quite yet. It's about to be, but it's not yet. So that enters my east trade route. Right. right. And now Hungary enters your, excuse me, I'll turn it for the camera. Hungary enters your east tableau as well. After or before Zupi? Um, playing Zupi is, is the one shot that caused Hungary to come into your tableau. All so right. Zupi played first, then the Empire card. And when you acquired the Empire, because it's a regime change, you get to place a concession. Right back there. And right it back could go way. it could go to any of the three sides of Hungary. Right. But obviously that is the You're choosing to place the it there. Cat's meow, so to speak. All right. Matthias Corvinus. All right. The crow. Corvinus. Corvinus. 
next. Okay. I have no money that's, at all. That's poor. So I will be running a trade fair. All right. So step... Oh, go ahead. Just so you know, uh, your queen on your ottoman has a commerce op, in case you were wondering. That is or true. Wanted a, wanted an alternate way to get money without giving the rest of us money also. I think I'd rather get the two money. All right. Okay, so here's a trade fair. We've, we've uh, referred to it, but have not yet run through it. So the first thing you do with the trade fair is you discard the card from the market. That's what's stimulating the economy. Oh, okay. Sorry. You discard the card from the, uh, from the market. You then add, in the case of a four-player game, two florins to the market. And now... And that moves with the discarded card. That's any correct. Money that's any money that's on it goes Any florins in. on that discarded card Good. go to the market. And so now, from the market's money, you pay one to the instigator of the trade fair. There you go. You. And one to each concession along the trade route starting at its origination. And so uh, here, from Tana, we'll, follow, we'll be following this black line down to Mamluk. And so here, you pay every piece that's between a border be it a trade concession or arr, arr, arr. a pirate. Here, one goes to the court of Alexandria, and here another goes to the Bank of Lisbon again. Thank you very much. And then the trade route uh, terminates in Mamluk. Had we run out of money, we would not have paid anyone we couldn't afford to pay. Or the trade fair, we, right. the game. The royal we. The royal right, we. Yeah. Now, that said, now that the trade fair is operated... Oh, levies, you say, sir? Levies. Uh, profits from the trade route... Uh, being kind of distributed along the places along the trade route. And so now, the instigator of the trade fair gets to pick which piece along each map card through which the trade fair paid is placed. One piece per map card. And this is where the, the printed symbol color on, matters. The, 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 right. the color and the symbol of the... Of the, uh, the piece. The yeah. piece matters. Right. So, Dan, it is your option, sir, Let's for all here. four of those cards. And while he's picking, I'll go ahead and describe. Let's say we didn't have enough money to pay the trade fair. We only had enough to pay this first concession. Only the first map card would have received a levy, not the second, because the trade fair did not continue around. It stopped in between the map pieces. Exactly. The, 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 the merchants ate it all before That's it right. got any, any further. So I, I placed a white knight okay. here. A Catholic knight. A... Did you say they were in the East? You know, that's the thing. I'm not real sure. I just know that uh, there probably weren't many Eastern Protestant. Orthodox. I just know there weren't <laughs> many pro Protestants. Yeah, maybe yeah. Eastern Orthodox. I, I just rook. I know there weren't many Protestants down in uh, down in the Achaean League. Right. And this one is full. It is full. In the game terms, it is saturated, and so a saturated card cannot receive a levy, which means that in that tax op example, you can't tax in a map area that's, that's saturated. saturated. Right. And that's the one. That's the one real gotcha that I have found that yeah. it's easy to not, overlook. That not one many. thing tends to trip me up. I still you know, have an action left. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Not yet. All right. It, it was so involved. It was so, right. All right. Go ahead. So yeah, that's one action. So my second Can action. not run another trade route. Right on either side. Correct. Even though there's money available. Yes. So I will pay two florins. Will for you stop that? The Bundshu revolt. As you do. Into my hand. All right. So, okay. there you go. So, now both the, both the conveyor belts. Here we go. And uh, just so we complete the kind of actions of the trade fair, the card that's discarded... Is out of the game. ...is now part of the market. Um, we tend to throw them out yeah, um, to the side, but how you, how you kind of run your game accounting, it's, it's your table. Right. All right, cool. All right, so looking around here, I'm regretting having not taken over Aragon earlier. Um, no. Um, so let's see here. There is a queen out there over on the east trade route, yep, which I can't afford. I have five florins. But I am leaning towards... She likes red shirts better. You know what? I'm going to actually go ahead and take the, uh, the concession, the India Armada, right here. So that's going to cost me two florins. What? Nothing. Okay. One, two, 
take that into my hand, and now we're going to run the West trade route because I'm positioned well enough. So we're going to add two. This card, good call. And actually, that money comes to the market at the end if it matters. Uh, Fair in enough. our example, okay, so it it hasn't. all right, all right, good deal. So we have five florins. I get one as the instigator to start. Then we're going to hit one again to Mike. Thanks, chat. Thank there. You. Comes down. Now we're following the white line. So it comes through either way. Down here. Across. Oh, hey. Look at that. Oh, hey. Look at that. Coming back up. We hit green. And that is... Who is that? That's, That's Danny. All right. Yes. Now, note, we're out of money at this point. Right. It stops right there. So the last three cards... And the last one orange concession does not get any money because, That's right. well, there's no money to go around. So, again, now we're going to go ahead and uh, do the levy. So, Dan, if you would. A red rook. A saturated. Mm -hmm. The next uh, one's a white rook. Yep. Uh, saturated. saturated and a black rook. And then, and then Portugal a black gets one as rook well. as well. And then here's the example where the trade route uh, ended, uh, ran out of money before it finished. This is the last concession paid. England, oh, sorry, this is the last concession paid. England does not receive a levy. Right. So now these two go on to the last card, and that's my second action. Shift. Done. Okay. So y'all can barely see oh, my yeah. one florin. Hold on, let me... Wait, oh, it's okay. You don't have to... No, no. I don't, make yeah, you, I don't mean so. to make you keep fooling with it. No, y'all can right. see my one lonely florin here. So I'm going to run my east op. All right, now me, I will actually ops. widen this for <laughs> folks to see. All right. My so, east ops is one lonely card. I'm, and when you run ops, you can run one icon per card. So it starts at your banker, east side, west side. My east tableau, you can run west tableau. One whole side. So if you had seven cards out here. I would run one icon for each of those seven cards. There you go. Don't oh. have to run, don't have to do an op on a card if you don't want to. You can do them in any order you please. If it causes you to add cards to your tableau, you may run ops on those newly added cards, assuming that they are valid to be done. Uh, in this case, it's one lonely op on one lonely card. I'm running East Commerce. Which is what? To get a florin from any card in the marketplace on that area. So here's East. If there were a florin there, that would be an option for me to take but there's not, so I'm just taking it from there. Oh, look at that. You've doubled your entire fortune, treasure, treasure. right? Yeah. <laughs> Only to turn around and blow it. Uh, yeah, how about that? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Dylan Beck has a fair amount of experience yeah, with this. Yeah, I think so. He's I've like, noticed it, that as it, well. If only Mike... Uh, had predicted this and chosen to place two concession and lose the night during the hungry peasant revolt, which you, <laughs> right? They'd be raking it in and Hungary's military would have been rebuilt. So get the money and then with the levy, you're right. Right. So uh, you'd have to right. leave it, leave Good. it vulnerable just for a moment. Good stuff. And no. And this is, this is why the peanut gallery is oh, invaluable, yeah. especially awesome. in games like this. Sure. Because we don't claim to be experts on this. We just want to be able to show it off and be Competent, if not yeah. strong. Players. And especially in a game like this, it's impossible to make good radio while also seeing everything there is to offer in the marketplace. You know, <laughs> right. I'm kind of picking the cards that I can afford with my <laughs> couple of shekels here. Um, so I'm going to buy the Hanseatic League out of the market for my second action into my hand, and then I'm done. So we'll advance the market. Oh, Sound yeah, and compare. somebody's talking about the when you do the trade fair, it literally doesn't matter what card you throw away, whether it's this one or oh. whether it's this one. It just... It's out of the game yeah, regardless. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it really doesn't. So instead of having to move everything, it just, especially with cameras and all that... When I was doing my learning game, I yeah. was stacking up the cards here. Sure. Well, however you want to do it. Yeah. All right. All right, the Kerr Bank of Alexandria is rolling deep. Okay. So we're going to buy deep. Right. One, two, three, four... Taking the queen. Coffers exhausted. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, not exhausted. Just about. Oh, a couple. Almost. All right. So the queen has to be played with a second action to come into play. Correct. Which she will do. And what are her options? For her options are the Mameluke, the Ottoman, and the Hungarian Empire and as the target. And I'll stop you there. 
uh, in this case, during our game state right now, Ottoman is already in the, in the game. It's in Dan's tableau. Hungary is in Mike's tableau, which means that that queen now has one option uh, as the coronation one-shot, the Mamluk Empire. Oh, so it's Mamluk and Ottomans? It's Mamluk, Ottoman, and Hungary. And Hungary. Oh, and uh, he Ottoman has, is out, and, and he, he has, has Hungary. Hungary. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Fair you enough. cannot run a coronation one-shot on an empire that is already out of the empire stack. Right, so Mamluk's there. All right, and they belong in the Eastern Empire. Other way, there, there you, you go. go. You got it. And it covers the one shot. Cover the. There you go. J just like so. There you go. You got it. And right. then, because it was a regime change, sir, you can place a concession where. Uh, bordering that and bordering the Mamelukes. Well, so right now you have two options: either this lonely land border, which or, gets you nothing except it does help with votes. Yes. Don't or even think about it. Help! Help! I'm being oppressed. Uh, no, uh, sir. Uh, that, oh, that goes yeah. on to Mamluk, that. Mamluk, and that costs you one florin to repress. And the reason that went to Mamluk is because the card interacting with that location is Mamluk. In our previously in the game, when the same concession was repressed, it went on to Ottoman because the location on the card is Ottoman. So that was both your actions, but now note here, before I zoom back oh, sure. in, Mike's now on the east side, he has four potential cards in which he can do one icon apiece right. if he chooses to do the Eastern Ops. All mm -hmm. right. Go ahead and bring this in a little bit tighter so you guys can see it a little clearer. There we go. Dan, sir. So, are you following along? I realize you're probably not grokking it if you have not read the book and, and played the game, but are you at least able to follow along? And, and this is important. I want feedback from y'all. Are we over explaining too much or yeah. are we doing enough or, you know, or too much glossing over too? Yeah. Yeah. So please give us feedback on that. All right. Cause we're doing this for y'all's benefit. Okay. I'm going to pay one to buy that. Go, you gotta, the, gotta try to the, say uh, <laughs> the Pospolite Rusini. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Pospolite and Rusini. You get the, uh, I all get the money the that's on it. That right. was on it. So I basically get that for free. That goes into my hand. And note, uh, for everyone playing and keeping score at home, Dan now has the maximum two cards in hand. <laughs> One in each hand. I oh, I didn't realize thing. my hands were blocking Dan. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Man. Okay. Hey, I see folks I recognize from the Slack. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Michael and Andrew and everybody. Yep. I will play the Pospolite Rusazini. That allows me to place a Catholic Rook in Hungary. Now, Hungary is saturated, and so Dan has the option to repress one of the pieces. And now that the Hungary Empire is in, is in play, that repressed piece will go on to the Empire, which, by the way, is in Mike's tableau. Right. Um, Dan wants to do it if he can because repressed pieces effectively represent instability within that particular empire. Um, uh, repressed pawns become repressed serfs. Uh, repressed rooks and knights become agitated nobility who are itching to overturn that regime. Yes. So I will do that. I'll pay a florin to repress, to repress that knight. Yep. Okay. Which goes on to the empire card. Um, an edge case of the market, not really an edge case, but we'll go over it now since the opportunity's here. Let's say Dan bought this first card. Dan Let's bought say, this first card. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that Dan yeah. wanted to buy the second card. Dan, did you want to buy the second card? All he right. might have if he could have afforded it. Now, <laughs> had he wanted to do so, he would have paid the first florin to the market card, as per usual. But there's no card here to pay, and so instead, he pays to the other side. When buying cards, you always pay the same amount. The other thing to consider, let's say in our previous example, that Dan had bought this second card here. He would have popped Florence there, bought that card. He could not then have come back and bought this first card that he put money on. If you're buying cards in sequence in the same market, it must occur first and then... Right. It, you can't pay yourself for buying a card, exactly. essentially. Um, 
Sequential is not the right word, but I'm struggling to find the right word. You're um, good. You're but, good. In order. Yeah. We're feeling. Yeah. Thanks. And everyone's saying, no, we're not over-explaining. So good. We'll keep So we'll keep going. Perfect. Yeah, cool. All right. That was your second Edward, I, yes. right. I see what you mean about uh, running the chat, teaching, and playing. This is... This is a whole new uphill battle. It's, 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 now you have a new My gosh, this is so much fun. Yeah. This is it's hard enough. This it's is impossible such, to play competently no. yeah, but, and, and play. This is such a delicious, masochistic this, pleasure. Yeah, on, on such a simple game. I really, really <laughs> I am. Yeah. I'd have hated to have beaten all y'all. Right. <laughs> It may still happen. <laughs> yes. This slightly evens the playing field. You know what? Hey, actually, be, hey, I have sure. a question for the peanut gallery real quick because it's a rules question that we have been playing um, our best guess, okay. but we're not totally clear on. And this is a good example right here for mm. the bishop cards. When it says the West. Right. When you play, when, when the card, the horse, House of Borgia comes out and you play the bishop, can that go on any card labeled the West, or is it any card that is in the West? And I'll tell you what the living rules now say. Okay, good, because uh, you read of, these over. I think, yeah, I think as of January of this year, okay. uh, within the last six months, it's been edited to clarify uh, that, in this case, the bishop, the agent uh, of a card listed the West location, can go to any card within the West or a card printed with the printed location, okay. the West. which is exactly how we've been playing it, right. so I'm glad And the word okay. printed location was what tripped us up. It's right. actually been struck through in the living rules. Okay. They removed that as part of the clarification. Does Good. it also go the other way? So yes, it, it does. Okay, so if I had well, a behead for Portugal, say, could that could also target be the It the could West. also go to the West. Right. Okay. They're cool. interchangeable in that way. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that would be... Ooh, Thanks, guys. Could. And that's something novel about the Eklund games is that uh, they have updated uh, living rules for, as I understand it, uh, any of the games that are in publication. Hmm. Uh, you can go there. It's on BGG, like I said before. Right. Phil Eklund said, you know, told someone, you know, the scanned PDF is on there by his uh, by his request. And so the rules are out there. Um, uh, kind of, finish your thought. Yeah. Oh, uh, the rules are out there, but also the living rules are out there in the most up-to-date format. All right. Okay, so we're going to see if I don't step on myself here trying this. So the West Trade route here, I'm going to purchase Bonfire of the Va Vanities, and then I'm going to play Bonfire of the Vanities. Nice. All right, so playing that, it triggers the Pre Peasant Revolt if I wish to, and actually I'm placing this here on purpose. Sort of. In the Papal States. There you go. Next, nice. to, the Papal Next States. to the Papal States. So, the Peasant Revolt, and I'll just read it here. The attackers are all the agents on the acting card, if I may, just for graphic, which is... Well, actually, in this case, this is a great this example. Is not, right? Bishops do not participate in attacks. And so the agent on this card does not participate. Though there is an agent there, the Peasant Revolt, the one-shot, does not bring the bishop in. If it were a rook or a knight or a pawn, it would participate. Okay. In this particular case, it does not. So in that case, I will not. Never mind. I think that's the you can still place that, though. I could, but no, we won't. Oh, okay. Uh, that's your floor. Yep, and that's as is floor. that one. Alright, and I was worried about that with the bishops because the fact that they play on tableau cards and not on the map. Um, I really don't want to get rid of that. And we're not up there in France. I am not positioned real well right now. However, in the West, just looking around the table. Mm -hmm. So you have Mike has no West cards. You have Dan has no West cards. You have one. A I have one in each card. Um, Not super thrilled. Uh, <laughs> good, good jokes, peanut gallery. Well done. Passing into the West. I think I can't say it because of trademark issues. I don't want to get Edward into hot water. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this short-sighted anyway, even though it's not really what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and play this card from my hand. Uh, oh, sorry. Over to the West side which is the India Armada. 
So I could. Oh, it is twice. You could not. Why not? The trade shift is what oh, you're I to. need Right. Not going to do the trade shift because of the fact that you require one of the navigation uh, symbols. And if you notice, I have no. I had no navigation symbols before right. I placed this, so this one here does not count in this case. And here's where I'm. Uh, here's where we're both hurting that you ran the trade fair because the other card had it. But oh, again, okay. I mean, so it's all your fault. I'll deal with it. However, <laughs> I will put out a concession nice. here uh, in Portugal. Nicely done. All right, so let's go and switch back over, and here is Portugal. It says so right there. So I could. Obviously, I'm, it's booked up. It's full. Mm -hmm. It's saturated. So I'm going. I'm going to choose to repress one. Um, I'm not going to repress mine. Stop that. All right. So Portugal is in, in the play. Empire stack. So there goes Dan's, and mine goes out. That I pay one florin. Wait, those were here, weren't they? Shoot, peanut gallery. Where were these three bucks? These three florins. Mm. Um, I will pay one. Though, to, to be able to do that, to repress. Those may have come from your last trade fair. They did. Good yeah. call. Those yeah, are yeah. mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You Good have call. a fair amount of yep, money. Yep. Yeah. Good call. Uh, and for my second action, I will now position myself. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. We're going to go ahead and run the west trade route. Nice. All right. So, doing it again. We put that card goes away. We put two out here. I get the first one off the top. Blue gets one. Thank you. And I'm going to get the next three because it's going to come down around. One, two, three. And again, it stops right there. So saturated, 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 and wait for it. Saturated. All right. That's the end of my turn. But we're getting paid. Oh, excuse me. I chuckled when I mentioned the fives. Excuse me. Mm hmm and now you know what the Medici crest or coat of arms is. Those seven dots. That's all their wealth. Oh, really? That represents all their wealth. Oh, interesting. Huh. All right, cool. All right. So this card that I took into my hand seems a lot less useful now that there's no money on the West Trade oh, Room. I'm so sorry. I know you are. I, I believe I, you. I, I'm <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> and I'm also kicking myself for having taken the Holy, Ro Holy Roman Empire because it starts with no knights. And... Uh, when, if you were to use the ops on your empire card, or on your king card, uh, that's campaigning. Campaigning only happens with knights. You're only attacking with knights on the map board, which means the Holy Roman Empire starts with no offensive capability. Man Jr., I did not... I, I, I went back, I did not buy the Bonfire of the Vanities, so I yeah. actually... The only two cards, I, uh, two actions, I played a card, then ran the West The trade fair. Yep, go ahead. Just clarifying. Yep. So, with my one lonely Florin... Oh, man. Hold on. Okay, I'm over it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no sympathy from this corner. Oh, oh, well, I gave it to him for about three <laughs> seconds. I mean, come on. Hmm. What am I looking at here? What I'm looking at is that Dan has the Ottoman Empire, which, as the chats recognized, is a very strong position mm -hmm. uh, within the game. The Ottoman Empire starts with two knights and a rook, and gains pieces quickly through levies because at the beginning of the game, both trade routes run through the Ottoman Empire. It's and good so to be is, the king. It's good to be the king. It is a very strong offensive capability. It is a very strong defensive capability. Well, right and now, it's darn near impregnable defensively. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Um, and so what I'm considering is... Hmm... Hmm. While, while you're yeah. thinking, oh, go ahead. What I'm going to do is purchase the TMR system from the East Market, and just so you all see what it is, it's a Rook agent, there's no one-shot, but what it is, what I'm really looking at here, is a Siege Op in the East, and that's being able to, and the Siege, we haven't discussed that Op yet, Siege kills a Knight or a Rook on a map card in the location indicated, and so a Siege, the East, is quite powerful in its ability to affect these two jokers over here, Mike and Mike and Dan. And so I paid one, I got one back because there was a Florin on the card. Um, 
That was my first action. My second will be to play it into my, excuse me, East Tableau. Now I'm finished. And there's no one shot and... There's no one shot and... Oh, excuse me. Uh, the agent, I'm going to... You can elect not to play the agent if you wish. Yeah, I really want to play my the Black Rook. And where I'm going to put it, who do I want to can, weaken? Can you with... To repress? Because you have no Florins, sir. Oh, I paid the floor. Oh, you I, just I, did. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And so I get to choose to repress. German mm -hmm. Mike's, uh, if you want help since you're running this, get the Islam Bishop and the Islam Reign Supreme. Nice. Thanks. That's a good call. Um, I think what I'll do is repress. Hmm. Take care, Andrew. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Yes, Lignum is tomorrow, Mr. Bob. I'll be repressing this red knight. Uh, you know what? No. I'll be repressing this black knight from Constantinople onto the Ottoman Empire. Help to cut, mm. uh, cut down on that aggressive capability a little. And that's my turn. So I'm thinking now, look, there's some He's power right. sitting over there on the Ottoman Empire. Is there an Ottoman conspiracy over here? Yep. There's not a peasant result, but there is a conspiracy. Which is all the agents on that card, meaning two the rooks. two rooks that's, right that's there. Start. Every repressed knight and rook, which is one, one on his card. So that's a total of three. Three Any attackers. bordering pirates, there are none. Yes. Then the defenders are the knights and rooks on the physical map card. Five. Okay, so, well, it's it's three to five, not in your favor right now. Mm -hmm. Just right now. There you go. So, I'll be keeping an eye on this card right here. Okay. As will Dan. Yes. <laughs> With his no florins. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on it, though. That's probably all I'll be able to do. <laughs> but that's something. But some stank will go on that card. Yep. Evil eye. Giving it side eye. I'm going to run the Eastern yes. trade route. And right. that is an excellent idea. Oh, that card goes away. Really wanted that one. Yeah, we, add, we add <laughs> two eyeing. to the trade fair. You get one off the top. Then you get one. Pay myself. Yep. Pay and myself. Yes, sir. And the trade route terminates. Yep. Correct. And everything's already saturated, so no levies. Then that... Florin comes over. That's in one action. Yeah. That, that is indeed one action. Now, let's let's run ops in the east. Okay, let me go ahead and show folks. All right. So we're looking at Mike's tableau, which is in the top right. Uh, there you go. So he can run those four. Uh, the, when he runs ops, he can run them in any order he chooses. They do not have to start at the banker and go out or vice versa. Pick and choose. And a lot of times, if it's not an obvious action, if it takes a while, we'll tap them. Or we'll put, if yeah. it's a commerce, we'll put the floor in on We'll pay there, the card. Right. Yeah. To show that that's been used. And right? I'm, I'm mostly doing this for commerce to take in coin. But let's go through the cards here. The, the Grim Horde has two actions, commerce and repress. Repress, remove from the map one token of the t depicted type. In this case, it's a pawn. It's a pawn. Which you, that, that's shown in the actual in, little action. In the icon. In of the yeah. icon, right. In Byzantium. Right. Which is... Uh, that would not be good because that's your own. <laughs> that's so that would be your concession. It right. gets him a florin, and if he was trying to weaken the Byzantine Empire, then maybe Fair that point. would be Fair point. what he wants to do. However... Probably not. <laughs> that one is taking commerce. commerce. The next card... And again, is, it's from any card in that specified market. He's running East Ops. Ergo, East Side. Right. East side. For those counting at home, that's two. All right. How many East Sides, yeah. West Sides? Thank you. Commerce, <laughs> Repress, and Taxation. This is Hungary. Hungary is saturated. I can't tax. Right. Don't want to repress. There's nothing to repress other well, than myself. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, the repress icon also indicates... Uh, oh, sorry. This repress icon is for a rook. There is a rook there. You probably aren't trying to repress <laughs> your own pieces your from your own right, yes. Yeah, my defense is in Hungary. <laughs> I think not. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, Matthias Corvinus can go on campaign. And what that would entail is... This, he is the king of Hungary, so he would take all of his knights. You would pay all of his knights, one florin each knight, uh, to attack an adjacent card. An adjacency here is both orthogonal and diagonal. Or 
orthogonal. <laughs> orthogonal. <laughs> not <laughs> nuclear all right, nuclear. Stop, stop. Not orthogonal, orthogonal. Okay, I'm all done now. All right, okay. <laughs> and yeah, there's there's no good attacks here. Right. Um, the the Mamelukes, um, which have, are have no knights. Have no knights, so those are doing nothing past second action, Dan. All right. Okay. Grief fill. Yep. There we go. <laughs> and you can take your florins now, sir. But that's a, actually a really good example of, <laughs> oh, I have, I don't have the money to pay my knights. Here, let me go ahead and commerce first so that I can, so do that I can pay my knights. Exactly. All right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's also a good example of he ran the trade fair on his first action. The market refill does not occur until the end of the player turn. Right. And so you can't run the trade fair to burn cards out of the conveyor to see what's coming up or to gain access to what's coming up. Okay, I am still sitting here with no florins. I'm florinless. <laughs> I'm trying to draw aggro here, man. I'm so, going off on orthogonals like I'm the red shirt. Come on, get me. So I, I will run my east ops because one of my hey, ops Ewan. is commerce. So that okay. Oh, you're running ops. Yep. Okay, hold on. Ops. Let's back it back out. Okay. There we so, go. Yeah. So All he's right. running his east ops, by which he means the only ops he can. That's right. The only ops I need. <laughs> so Strong one of them words. is commerce. The next one, I have a vote, which is not going to do me any good. And then I have siege in Hungary. Um, yes. All right. So siege is kill a rook, knight, or rook pirate. Or pirate. In Hungary. Right. And so I will just snipe that rook. And just right to be clear, it. because you choose to take the queen the the queen's <laughs> action, you cannot take the king's action because they are one and the same, or can you? I'm, uh, no, I'm I'm clarifying. It's an op per card. Okay. And so that's two different cards. So it's he two cards, you get two ops. Right. Okay. And that's where the power of different queens come in. Some queens have one op, oh. some have none. In the case of Dan's and mine, there's two ops on there. Okay. So that's right. additional that's choices. Cool. Isn't there a situation power. where they're treated as one card? Is it there is. Bishop there maybe? is. So if you, uh, so in the case where they're uh, one, the bishop who silences cards in Tableau, we haven't gotten there yet, we will, I'm sure. Um, when the bishop is on a card, it silences uh, both cards. It actually also silences any vassals of that empire on which Ooh, that bishop okay. is placed. Cool. Okay. Uh, the other case where a king and queen card are considered one is if you sell it from your tableau. Uh, if you, you sell a king right. from your tableau, okay. you sell them both, and you get two florins per card. So four. Oh, interesting. But wow, cool. that'd be... I, I've never seen anyone sell an empire. Talk about cutting off your foot to be able to keep walking. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then... I With will... your entire treasure. Yes. I'm betting it all on the Crimean Goths. Nice. All right. Cool. Still, two cards. Yep. Okay. So, mm. Edward the Black yep. and Yellow. It's the Black Sheep Squadron. Oh, wow. Well, hey there. Um, Pappy. Pappy. Yep. You guys are not doing anything on the west side whatsoever, are you? Just mm -hmm. about. <laughs> um... However, I do wish the Pap this was an Aragon card as opposed to Papal States. Um, this just isn't terribly exciting for where I'm sitting. I have no cards in my hand. I will go ahead and pay the two, or one, I'm sorry, and go ahead and take Bonfire of the Vanities into my hand, and then... You know what? I'm just reading over Conspiracy. Again, I've played the game five, six times. I still have to double check who's a attacker, who's a defender. Um, so in a Conspiracy... It's all the agents on the card, so I'm looking at the Order of Santiago here, which has two rooks. Plus repressed. Uh, right, which there is none because Portugal is not in play yet. Um, defenders are knights and rooks on the card, so right now it's a wash. But I will go ahead and purchase that card as well. So we go one here, 
There's no card here, so it goes up there, and I'll take that into my hand. Boom, done. Nice. So, with my no Florins, I'm going to run my e-stops. And that starts with uh, this, which is, uh, I'll take the Commerce. I'll take that. Uh, the second card gives me the option oh, of... Oh, you're running out. Sorry. A blacking... Oh. You're good. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. So, here I'm running Money, uh, Commerce for East. And the second card gives me the option of a Black Inquisitor, which, which is to move none. the Black Bishop. There's none yet. Tax somewhere in the East, which doesn't help me because the main purpose of taxing is partly uh, to injure someone else's concessions, but also to levy troops back into a an empire. And you could because there is one available spot in the East, so you right. could tax Hungary. I could tax Hungary. It doesn't help me. So instead, I'm going to siege in... The Ottomans. And in this case, I'm going to siege uh, the White Rook. So that's my first. That gave me a Florin, for which I'm going to buy the Barbarossa Brothers. It'll go into my hand. I'll show you what happens when I play it. <laughs> Ooh. It's Pirate. Oh, hey, we have our first comment. So, um, in the game uh, function, remember way, way back <laughs> an hour and a half ago, uh, we talked about how victory conditions are activated or may be activated in the course of the game. The Comet is how that happens. When a player purchases the Comet from the marketplace, instead of it going to their hand, it's discarded, and that player then chooses one of the four vic or one of the inactive victory conditions to then activate. Um, and once it's activated, it's activated permanently. It remains activated um, unless you're playing with the expansion. Um, Ooh. Moving on. Yeah, moving on. So that's the Comet. There's four in the game, one for each uh, victory condition. Uh, two in the East, two in the West, two in the and East, two in the West. Yeah. Mixed in with 12 cards. When, we, when I set up the deck, I dealt out 12 cards of each, mixed those in, and then four cards per player, 16 on top. So now we know that we're down to the final 12 cards. Right. Uh, or more, right, or less, I should say. Yeah. 14, in the East, sorry, 14. Not, yep. yeah, not 12. So, Mike, you're up. Here we go. Four Florins is going to recruit Margaret of Anjou. Nice. One, and two hands. Two, three, four. And for the second, we're running this trade route. Seems selfish. Man. I'm just saying. It seems real selfish. Yeah, that's just the way these games go, isn't it? So you're gonna get so he gets one for initiating, one one, and then he places a levy there, and that's that. So There's take two more florins. Oh, I, there is now because of that. You're right. And take your two florins as well, sir. All right, that's it. All right. Grief hill, sir. Now that is the proper way to pronounce that word. <laughs> Dan? Always. Oh, I still have no florins. But you do have a... Handful of cards. Yes, I do. Bingley a completely Bingley. full hand of yes. two cards. In fact, two hands. Saturated full. hands. Yes. I could say. loan you some florins at an appropriate interest rate. I In mean, fact, we are cannot. bankers, right? <laughs> right. You cannot. In <laughs> fact, you cannot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wrong. Allow me to throw the rule book at you. <laughs> um, that said, I'm probably the most thematic player of anyone in the group. I so don't know. I the love, two of you are close. Would, yeah. yeah, it's. <laughs> I will run my East Ops again. So my first action is East Commerce. So I will take. Oh, you're, I'm sorry, you're running Ops. Yep, uh, ops. He hearing hearing is, is impaired, apparently. There we go, bottom right of the uh, tableau. Yep. East Commerce, I get one Florin. I get to Siege in Hungary again. Or you, you choose to I Siege. I choose to Siege <laughs> Hungary. Stop me if you've heard this before. Goodbye. Right. That's that's the uh, East Ops. Yep, that was it. I can run the Eastern Treed route all night yeah, long, no. baby. Maybe I'll... Okay. Then I will sell a card from my hand. For two florins. For two florins. So, this is going away. Wow. All right. Dui Florinos. <laughs> yes. All right. Done. <laughs> I. Oh, 
I am, my hand also is saturated. I need to be careful because I'm starting to mm -hmm. eye cards out there and I'm like, no, stop. Careful. Um, all right, so the Peasant Revolt again. It's Agents on the card, which if it's a bishop, doesn't matter. Every repressed pawn, which there is none because the Papal States is not out, is it? Uh, it is not. States is okay. not. And um, pirates. And your bordering concessions and bordering pirates. Ah, so close. Hmm. Well, you have those two locked down. Um, all right. We're going to run the trade fair. The West Trade Route first. So, one, two. This one stays there. Is that okay? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, yes, that is okay. All right, that goes away. Then I get one. Mike gets one for up here, and I get the other three. Man. Where was that selfish comment coming from? I gave you one. I'm just saying. So then we, let's see, do, 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 right here. Yep. We levy there. That's the only one. Everyone else is saturated. Uh, then I will play uh, the Order of Santiago. And the reason I did this in this order specifically is playing this over to the west side is I'm going to run the conspiracy. So the conspiracy is all the agents on the acting card, which is two rooks. White. Yep. yep. So these two right here. Then we'll go ahead and bring it on back over. So it's these two here mm -hmm. versus the uh, every... We can skip that. There's no pirates. There's no repressed anything. Defenders are knights and rooks on the map card, which are going to be these two. So these two die, these two die, there's none left. So it wasn't victorious, but, but I weakened it. You destabilized poor Right, trade. and the reason I did the trade route first is if I did that first, then I ran the trade route, right. it would then get one more. Levy. Right, that's right. Levy. And so that's why I did it in the order I did. Right. All right. Cool. All right, those are my two actions. With my two cards, I need to start interacting with these folks. Um, as they say with the 18xx games, if you're not winning, do something. Oh, well, yeah, change the status <laughs> quo if you're not winning. So I'm going to play Barbarossa Brothers, and so in this case, it's pirates. Arr! So a black rook is played to a, uh, a map border adjacent to the Papal States. A no, rook. No. <laughs> no, I'm so, not reaching for his no, piece. No, I know. Uh, so the way, uh, the way that rooks, uh, the way that pirates work is they're played only to the C to the C locations Why adjacent to a map card. Oh. And so for the Papal States, there's only the two options that are the ocean. Obviously, I'm going I'm coming to oh, kill Edward's obviously. trade concession. All right. So, <laughs> so now if the Papal States was in play, this would then become a repressed book. Uh, it is not. Because oh, they're sorry, pirates. Pirates, they kill them. They kill him. Yep, that's right. Good call. And so that's the agent on the Barbarossa brothers. And so that's my first play, and for my second play, I'm going to play the Hanseatic League out of my hand. Um, it's, the card location is France, it goes in the West Tableau, namely, it's a trade concession adjacent to France. Oh, that's cute, like it ever is going to make it there. Not that it's being paid Not yet. yet. Um, and that's my turn. Those are those two actions. Cool. All right, so help me understand the strategic position here in Aragon. We have, a, we have a pirate, black, white, and a trade concession here. Let, let me stress one thing, and this might help folks at home as well. The only time the color of the piece matters is when it comes to a religious war, mm -hmm. religious something. Okay. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if it's white, black, purple, brown. It doesn't matter the color. It simply matters the type. Okay. All right. So that thing that you just did, yes. the, the, the war... The, the conspiracy. The conspiracy. That could, <laughs> if you were able to play that again, you could draw in the pirate and your trade concession. If right? I played one for Aragon, if I played it for Portugal, that's not, the pirate is not adjacent to Portugal, so no in that case. But for Aragon, it would be him, him, and, uh, sorry, it would, the conspiracy is, is only repressed. Peasant Revolt brings these guys in. Otherwise, it's only the pieces on the card 
uh, on the not, Empire card. Right, on the Empire card. Or on the card that's played, mm -hmm. that, that triggers the conspiracy. And it's only the person's trade concessions who triggers the Correct, revolt. exactly. All yes. Right. So that's a vulnerability for anyone owning Aragon other than Edward, then. Golly. All right. Getting East and West confused. So Aragon, we have one to be with a peasant board. revolt oh. on it in the western trade route that's coming up. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that uh, playing Margaret of Anjou and taking over Aragon for me is a bad play. I disagree. I think it's a strong play from well, where I'm sitting. Okay. No, from where I'm sitting. Well, yeah, it... it because then it tees it up for your empire. It, well, keep in mind, though, that you're not going to be able to claim Aragon if it's in play either way. Whether I have it, the only way you're able to take Aragon is if it's in the empire stack. Which is, With the coronation. Right, which, which it, it is. is. Correct. But I'd be in a weak, kind of a weak position. Mm. Well, there's, there are two things on it. Generally speaking, map pieces on the map Mm -hmm. represent stability. Pieces, okay. pirates and repressed pieces represent instability. Instability. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Let's have Margaret marry into Aragon. Okay. Uh, Aragon there you go. is right there. And let's see what happens. Okay. There's your John the Faithless, who goes to your West Tableau. Hey, welcome to the West Tableau. Yes, <laughs> right? <indeed>. Seriously. <laughs> now, another thing, again, we're doing this uh, at more as a teaching game, more so than... You know, we're trying to win. This is important to note right now. Yeah. At this moment, if if <laughs> the age of uh, is it feudalism, the yes. one closest to you, if the that Imperial. were flipped, yeah. if that were flipped, Michael would win the game right now because flip it over. Yeah. Here's here's where we're going to go into the details of the different victory conditions. Just this one. We'll do it as we go. The imperial victory to win, you must have at least. Two more king cards, not republics, than any of your opponents. Okay, so Mike has one, two, three king cards. Ash has one. Thanks for playing for me. Take my word for it. Dan and has Dan one. And Dan has one. So right. three, one. He has two more. That's okay? right. That's it. That That's the whole condition. Right. However, it is, it not, is active not active. Yet. So <laughs> what needs to happen? Well, Mike now sees this comic card, which is what triggers these to become active, or one of his choice, if he were to select it. Right. Because if he does not select it, Daddy Warbucks over here, sitting on 10 florins, probably is not going to allow that card to come back to you, and I will choose something that isn't that to play defense. All right. Let's let's finish up yes. the marriage yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. I just wanted to point no, it yeah. out. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, because... I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> so, uh, you've, you've acquired Regime Change, the yes. Kingdom of Aragon, and so your options to place concession are uh, land borders not occupied by yeah, a pirate. Let, let's get a straight trade So you're repressing it. Route. Uh, oh, that's right. That goes so you'll pay on a to Aragon. To repress that concession, uh, you'll pay one florin to repress I, that concession. And it does not go to me, it goes to China. <laughs> right. And then, it's not a bribe. four right. florins, one, two, three, four, Comet His Imperial. choice. It does not have to be the first one. It's his choice, but obviously that benefits him. And just in case anyone was curious, if Mike had two cards in his hand, he still could have purchased the Comet because mm. Comets don't come into your hand. They're discarded immediately. Cool. I'll bet that'll draw some aggro. That's quite possible. All I can say is get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can. I don't know if I can. Well, um, I think that you can because in your ops uh, you have two sieges yes. and you have a campaign. I can. I Siddharth, do have a mention campaign. whoever you get it from. We appreciate it. Thank you. Now, I say that uh, your, your other siege is in Ottoman, which doesn't help you, but you do All have right. a siege in Hungary. German Mike is yelling to campaign. <laughs> All right, are you going to run ops? Is that... Yes. All right, so back it back out. All right, cool. The, or, zo the Zoom's just happy to finally be used. Here. Right. All right. Right, so running east ops. <laughs> because you have no yeah. west. <laughs> I don't need the west. 
Or, well, you can't do it. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm not. Okay. Sorry. Siege in Hungary. Mm-hmm. Knock all that down out. Until all money is gone. Money mm-hmm. out. And then I can campaign from Ottoman. All right. So campaign creates a battle on a map card adjacent to the king's location, including diagonals. So from Ottoman to Hungary. Okay. Right. And then uh, the attackers are all the knights in the king's location. Meaning that one knight. Mm-hmm. Whom has to be paid. Yeah. Right. Defenders are knights and rooks in the defending map card. So one to one. If victorious, da 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 But it's not going to be. No. But hopefully... It weakens them yep. to where, yeah. To where someone so, else can do go. something about it. Okay. Boom, done. And then I, I also get to run the queen's... Correct. The queen's commerce, and that's on the east side. So it's one coin of your choice. I'll take one. Are you sure? I am sure. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. So that's both your actions, yeah? Uh, no, that's just one. Oh, that was that was ops. Mm-hmm. I apologize. Yep. Sorry. Let's see. Chairman Mike. Hey, oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I did something. That's more than I accomplished in the entire last game I played. I think. Yeah, but the the game before you 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 cracked it pretty well. That's true. The game before went very. You were teaching too. Oh yeah, that's true. Or adjudicating. Adjudicating. Yeah. So should should I challenge German Mike to a grudge match next week? Uh, no. Or later this week? <laughs> yeah, later than. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so I know. After the stream tomorrow with Lignum, that's yep. it. Heavy cardboard shuts down, uh, and then it's full heavy con. Heavy con, and yep. that's it. So I'm surprised you're doing a stream tomorrow. Um, heavy con. I'm so close. Uh, uh, honestly, I, I wish we weren't, but we're doing it as a favor to Clay at Capstone Games sure. to get that out yeah. ahead of uh, the release and everything. So nice. I told him I would. I'll take these Jewish pirates. All right. All right. So that is the second action. All right. I'm coming after you in Aragon. Oh, that's probably important tonight. There we go. Here's another queen. Oh, man. What what locations? Mameluk, Byzantium, and the Ottoman Empire. Is it Mameluk? Namely, Mameluk Byzantium. Is Mameluk is here. here. Byzantium is still in the Empire stack? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's here. Um... I'm desperate for a... Conspiracy for Portugal, and mm-hmm. there isn't any. Um, oh, wait. Or Hungary, for that matter. Wait a minute. Well, the the irony of ironies, uh, Isabella Castillo has come out for Portugal. Now yep. that I've weakened them, something fierce. <laughs> right. I can, I can grab the empire. Awesome. Um, I think you should do that. That sounds like a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> Wow. And the Papal States are not out yet. You're working on it, though. No, you were working on Hungary, right? Um, trying. Oh, trying to, so people can see it? Right, uh, okay. just cool. so y'all can good. see what pieces are out. The knights were laying flat so that you can see. Uh, the Ottomans have no knights presently because I went and fouled things up. So there's actually two black rooks there in Constantinople, um, which is screwing up the Ottomans' uh, aggressive capabilities. And generally speaking, uh, the table's ability to interact with or interfere with Mike. And now, because things have changed so much in Aragon, that peasant revolt obviously doesn't do me any good. Um, There's one peasant here. Apple States, Portugal... France is not terrible. All right, I'm not going to take too much time overthinking it, so we're just going to go ahead. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. Awesome. I have one card. Yep, that's one. And because I don't have my concession monopoly as I did, running the trade fair isn't nearly as uh, as interesting to mm-hmm. me. Uh, but we will go ahead and... Go ahead and play Isabel uh, Castillo. 
And again, that's going to be on... Ooh, wait, this might be on the east side. Um, but... Three. Yep. I... Uh, England's not bad. Yeah, what are your options? So, oh, I'm sorry. It's Portugal, Aragon, which both... Or, I'm sorry. Portugal, available. France, available. Aragon and AHRE are both out. Yep. So, actually, I think I will... Go ahead and take England. All right. So England, it being on the west side, so actually we're back over here. So we're going to scoot everybody over. And, and right. note, she has the availability to behead and repress, as well as King Edward IV uh, can campaign. So that's both of my actions. Then I get to place, because of a regime change, I get to go ahead and place out a concession in England. And, oh, hey. How about we'll, that? We'll go ahead and repress that. So he comes back onto England. I pay one florin, get four change, the turn of the, the, the Medici. The Medici is done. You need for you to say. Right? Seriously. Man. Come get me. Yeah, I would love to. Hmm. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. <laughs> We're trying, man. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate that, man. I'm catching up. Go ahead. Yeah. Continue. It's your turn. So here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for any kind of conspiracy in Hungary because it has a nice repressed knight. Mm -hmm. And any agents on that card would participate and there's no pieces to defend. But mm -hmm. not only do I have no money... I'm just not seeing that the card. That makes it difficult. That makes it difficult. <laughs> Step one. Trust me. Broke. Yep. <laughs> and here's, I actually have some Florins now. This is yeah, the first time right? in a while. Uh, and the other problem I have is uh, my one empire, the Holy Roman Empire, I've yet to be able to get a knight into, uh, into the Holy Roman Empire to give it any kind of offensive capabilities. Because you're at the back end of the trade route? Uh, right, and because um, I've not been pursuing the right ops cards mm -hmm. to be able to tax my right. own concessions mm -hmm. to get uh, those knights onto the, onto the card. Do you um, have any cards in your hand? I have no cards in my hand, and I have no florins to my name. And so the Bank of Augsburg... Remember, you can sell tableau cards. I, I don't know if you guys yeah. were talking about that while I was reading, but yeah, that is an option. Obviously, last Thanks. resort type stuff. Last but resort but if may have to happen. Yeah, if it'll keep him from winning. Well, and that's the right problem now. is that, that that's one of my two actions. And then what do I do with the other action? All right. Um, oh, wait, I just realized. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mike's about to win, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, Mike's going to win. I think so. And so I don't really I don't see the point. I think we can in, stop him. I don't know that there's we, a point in belaboring the royal the us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we tried. Which does it? So what does that say about the three people that have played the game multiple, multiple times? And Mike's like, oh, no, none of us understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, none of us have shirt. any idea what uh, we're doing. Oh, shame on us. Ash um, and I have an excuse. We're running. The stream kind of tonight. Where are you at, man? I rode here on my bike in the freezing rain and wind. <laughs> that is true. That's true. My brain is frozen. <laughs> you know, all I can say is that uh, I think occasionally the red shirt does survive. He does. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to run my east ops. So it's your be game, game over. Game. Yeah. <laughs> Way uh, over. I'm going to run my east ops, so that'll be a commerce here. Oh, uh, that's going to be... Let me, let me zoom it out so oh, sure. folks can see. All right, go ahead. Run an East Ops in the top left there. Uh, I'll be running my East Ops here. Uh, that'll be a Commerce there. I'm going to... And which to... card did you take it off of, sir? I'm sorry? Oh, just from the market. Okay, which he could have taken it off of those if he wished. Yeah. Uh, East Ops here. Um... You know, honestly, moving the Corsair doesn't really matter. Um, but cool. I'm going to tax this concession there uh, in the Ottomans. Not that it matters, but just so that y'all can see how taxing works. And you can because it's not saturated. Right. The, the, loca mm -hmm. the location on the card is the east. And so I'm taxing. He'll pay to China. And then he, uh, the player paying the tax, chooses right. the levy. Well, actually, it's just a levy. So the levy goes out based on the map. Excuse me. Right. Uh, but if there were more than one blank space, he would choose which one to place. 
Um, so that's my first. And the and while you're thinking, sure. uh, the reason Mike paid it is because he's taxing that concession. And here's Mike, where I'm one. Thankfully, I had a florin to pay for it. And if, <laughs> what would have happened had he not had the florin? Oh, um, if he, he didn't have the, the florin, concession. he loses the concession. Right. It's just gone, right? It's not repressed. It's not repressed. It, I, it, all good questions. We'll, we'll, we'll look it up. These are all very Go good ahead. questions. Yep. Uh, I'll pay just to just to uh, to not forestall the inevitable. I'll buy <laughs> buy one of the cards out of the market. All and right. So those are my two actions. And here, where as so often, one action short to be able to do what I needed mm -hmm. to do. Right. But, Oh, yeah. And what, what is the other action that you wanted to do, though? Oh, I wanted to go. Um, this card, uh, the Dervishes, plays the brings in a black bishop that uh, German Mike has been clamoring for for probably <laughs> the last hour, I think, in the chat. Um, and uh, I was hoping to use that to help shut down Mike. Gotcha. Uh, I choose to take the victory action. Yes. <laughs> well done. All right. All right, so the one active victory there, he must have two more than any other player, two more empires. One, two, three. You have one. one. I have one. And not, hey, I didn't get shut out. I have one. But really, Mike has won. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. When a bishop is on a king, does that count for as, the victory? As muting it. Yeah, that's a good question for the peanut gallery because I don't know off the top of my head, to be honest with you. <laughs> Um, Sorry, what right. was that again? Does a, if a bishop is on a king, does it still count for the victory condition? Or is oh, it muted? It's ju the bishops just mute the ops. The ops. Oh, okay. Just so, silence okay, okay. the ops All on right. the card. So that bishop um, would not have prevented no, his victory. No, um, but even just to interfere and interact right, with Just them. to do something. Um, all right. Since, gotcha. since we didn't really cover all of the icons, do you mind if we kind of run through each of the you icons know, that we have on, our, we, sure, on yeah, our tableaus? Okay, yeah, actually, yeah. Here, we'll go ahead and do this. So... Um, We'll start with mine just because yeah. it's, it's it's a little bit closer. So and you yeah, have the wonderful behead in I your do. in your right. tableau. So we're talking about different uh, ops. different ops that could run. We we've talked about tax and siege. Um, well, here the trade shift. Had I had an icon here, what I would have been able to do with the trade shift is move that real quick. Is change where the white trade uh where the i'm sorry the west trade route originates right. from so the busted token moves from here and would move up to yep to there uh trebizond trebizond and then what it would look like is it would emanate from here come up through and boom that's it right all right which would and have changed the whole landscape of the game it totally would have and on top of that my concessions count twice in the space spice item Spice Island Trade Fair. It's a good yeah. thing I don't have a podcast. <laughs> um, so what that means, again, again, going back to this, is had I been able to, now all of a sudden, that would be two, four florins a piece, plus one for initiating it. Yikes. Or if someone if someone else had initiated it, I would still get four, right. to give you an idea. All right? Oh, hey, Jeremy. How's it going? So that's... Uh, that's the trade shift. So commerce, we've gone over vote and go for it. Take it over for that, for the so, vote. So the way that vote works, it's the, the way the vote works is it converts a king in your tableau to a republic in your tableau. And if you can see here, uh, every empire has a, sorry, I'll turn it around so the, so everyone can see every empire has a king side and an M, a republic side. They have different ops icons. Um, and also, uh, some of them have different prestige icons for the law or other uh, other victory conditions. Um, vote, the way it works, is to initiate a vote, you must have more concessions bordering that empire than anyone else. Uh, you then will pay one florin per repressed token on that empire. Uh, and then, when it's successful, you then flip that empire, discarding any queens, if present, from the empire, and then it becomes a republic. So in this case, if I were, let, let's go back here and take a look, if I were to cause a vote in the West, I could choose Any England. of the six empires in, in play Correct. in the West. But note, I have one repressed token here in England. So if we come back over here in England, I have a vote of two to zero. 
I would pay one florin for the, for the repressed, repressed token concession. Right. or uh, repressed yeah. uh, uh, concession, then the queen would go away and boom, it becomes a republic. It's a regime change. I would then be able to place a concession. Right. I probably wouldn't because of the You're fact already that there. I'm already there, etc. So that that's vote. Um, and the reason, uh, the other thing to, to remember, vote uh, can be any empire that's in a tableau that is not a vassal. So an empire that's a vassal of someone else can't vote their way out of uh, being, being a vassal. A vassal. <laughs> that's, not how, that's not how medieval Europe works. Right, so it doesn't have to be in your tableau to run a vote. It simply has to be in play. In, in, you cannot so conduct a vote on a, an empire in the empire state. Exactly, and that's right. one of the advantages of having the concessions out there. Yep, right. right? Okay. Um, and I saw in the peanut gallery where you want us to cover the other three victory conditions, and actually uh, the other three victory conditions and the alternate game end condition We'll cover that for sure, since this is kind of the teach through and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's vote. Um, now, uh, the last one we we talked about repress. We've done mm -hmm. it already. I'm not going to worry about that. So beheading, which is discard one card in any tableau with the same location as the acting card. If used to discard a, an empire, they also die. Right. So if she, meaning the West, or I'm sorry, England, mm -hmm. yeah, I can then be like, hey, fellas. Anybody have any England cards? If they do, I could choose to kill their card from their tableau. If it happens to be an empire, which it's not going to because she's there on, right. with England, mm -hmm. um, then she would die as well. So that's beheading. Yep. All right, that's all my actions available. Okay. Um, the other ones that I have uh, are primarily the Inquisitor and the alternate uh, result of attacks. Let's say that I ran attacks uh, in in the east. You ran attacks owner, in the east, and the owner of the concession chose not to pay it. That concession would then be repressed. Okay. Not the end of the world, but that's the that's the alternative result. Uh, the one piece that we'd not really seen in the game is the bishop. As I drop it on the table, uh, bishops go onto tableau cards and silence. Shh. All non-religious ops on that card, and so. Religious being religious ops being blue, and all of them being to interact with an inquisitor of a particular color. Uh, for instance, a bishop on this on an empire card would prevent it from campaigning. A bishop on this card would prevent Mike from doing any of the ops on that card. So if he ran east op, uh, yeah east ops, he would basically skip that card. Right. So when a bishop comes into play, it can be played either on the card. Uh, here, I'll slide my tableau over so you can see. Uh, it is played either on the tableau on which the agent is indicated or on a location matching the card played. This card happens to be the east, and so it can be a card saying the east or any of the four locations in the east. And so I would probably have stuck it over here, maybe over there, somewhere over here to start fouling up Mike's plans. Right. Now, on a subsequent Inquisitor op, um, you can then move any bishop of the color indicated on your card. My two inquisitor ops indicate a black in, uh, bishop, and so you can move them either to an adjacent card in a tableau or to another card matching the location of the bishop's current location. Not, not the, location. the location of the card with exactly. the Exactly, and, and so. It's easy to trip up on that. I just wanted to stress that. Thank That's you, all. yeah. And so in this case, if I were running inquisitor again, it would then be able to go either to Hungary to the adjacent card, or to another card with the location Byzantium. And it can never cross the banker card. Right. The banker card is is not an, uh, a legal placement for the bishop, and so in that way, bishops never cross over uh, tableaus. You should also note that it does not have to be a bishop that you placed. That's when right. You use yeah. Inquisitor. It's any bishop Yeah, of that because color. you don't know who owns right. them at that point. The, or you don't own it. Well, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You're enough. exactly right. Thanks, Jeremy. We appreciate it. Continue. Um, thanks. And so uh, that also brings into play the way that bishops interact with each other. They don't. Uh, what <laughs> they, they don't. They don't, yes. yeah. <laughs> Namely speaking, they don't. They don't like one another regardless of their uh, of religious affiliation. Yes. Right. And so let's say I was running my West Ops and this red Inquisitor icon here, if 
I wanted to, let's say they were on my, in my tableau. So okay. God forbid. Oh yeah, because in, in this case, now, you, when you were to, if you were to run the East Ops, that would just be terrible. That would silence two of my cards. So you would only run those two yeah. cards essentially. Yeah, let's say, let's say, uh, oh, let's say, the, worse. well, yeah, okay. actually, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that, that'd be that's better. better. So these two bishops would be silencing these two cards, not not that particular op, but these two cards uh, from my ops tableau, silenced. So it's a bad example because there's an inquisitor op here, but let's pretend there isn't. Just for the sake of, I would choose to run my west ops to then move this red bishop that's here adjacent. When two bishops are in the same location, they destroy each other. They, they annihilate each other. Um, the rulebook has some very clever names to refer to the different ways that uh, the religions interacted in oh, medieval really? Europe. Uh, suffice to say, disputation. Yeah, yes. yeah, the Diet of Worms and some of the others. But suffice to say that when bishops uh, co-locate, they are destroyed. Even if they're the same religion. Even if they're the same color, exactly. They go into conclave and they never come out. <laughs> Uh, Anything else? The well, um, let's see. Let's run through. We saw Behead. We saw Campaign a little bit. We saw Commerce. We saw Corsair. Um, a fine point of Corsair. Uh, the Corsair op lets you move a Corsair of the matching color. In my tableau, I have one that's white and one that's black. Only in our game right now, there's only the black Corsair. But, and I think this is in the living rules. I don't think the, the paper rules, it may be a clarification. I saw the whole lively discussion about living rules versus printed rules. Right. Um, so, the Corsair op, paired with a location, lets you move the Corsair to the C locations adjacent to that map card, or to the C location of a map card adjacent to this map card. So, meaning, oh. if he's here... He actually can move to this could side of Aragon, to or to oh, this, yeah. or to this, this side. side, or to this side of the Ottoman. Oh, because, because there is water. Right there, you go. Okay, but oh, good to know. with the offshoot, right. that once you've moved it out of the of, yeah, sure. out of the adjacency to the Papal States, I can no longer control that Corsair or that, uh, so, that pirate. So it's kind of a one shot for you. Exactly, you're sending them off to kill the important concession, mm -hmm. but that's it, and Unless you don't control them anymore. Someone moves it back. Moves it back, right. Uh, so that's a finer point of Corsair that we didn't get to see, uh, but suffice to say, Corsair lets you move the pirates and kill other people's concessions. And that covers the other, the rest of the ta tableau ops. Yeah. That's it. Uh, Let's go ahead and go sure. through the... Uh... So, for the other victory conditions, uh, we saw Imperial, which is two more empires than your, other, your opponents. And honestly, that's the most straightforward and most simple, oh, easiest yeah. way to win the game, I think. Right. For, especially for beginners. Right. So the next is the globalization victory. It is to have two more concessions than any of your opponents. Trade concessions. So on in the this map. case, let's look at it. See, we have three for Mike and two for uh, Ash, two for me. So he only has one more. One more, okay. right. Two more than your opponents, any of your opponents. And more navigation prestige or navigation icons than any of your opponents. Oh, thank you. And it's here in tiny, tiny print, so, and they're in much they bigger like. print. It's the ship icon. It must be in your tableau, and so you need two more concessions and more of those than your opponents. One more is sufficient. So, so that's the globalization victory. Um, I'll point out, the Portugal Empire, the Kingdom of Portugal, and I think the Republic too, yeah. The Kingdom of Portugal has that icon Which on the Republic. Which makes sense because they're the Portuguese or and on the empire. they were the... They were the know, navigators, yeah. exactly. The next is the Renaissance victory. And this is where the republics come in handy. That's where you're trying to vote your own kingdoms into republics, as if you're pursuing the Renaissance victory. And this goes back to what we were talking about. If I ran a vote, because of, move your hand real quick. If we ran a vote, oh, actually that works. I ran a vote here in England. Right. I have more concessions. So because I have more concessions, I would pay one for that, and boom, get rid of the queen. It becomes a republic, right. and that's how, it's a straw man action. So the republic, and what's the prerequisites? So the prerequisites are more republics than any of your opponents, and at least two more law icons than any of your opponents. Some of the republics have law icons on them. England, and for example, the Republic of England has a law icon on it. And so in this case, 
Had Edward been able to do that and activated the Renaissance victory, he would have won. We were a ways away. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. Just showing no, yeah. how this could have worked. How these right. mechanisms work. Yep. Um, so that's the Renaissance victory. It's a little different than globalization. It's just more republics and then two more of the law icons. Two more law icons. Two more, two more which icons. just to clarify, Dan, Dan has one, so that yeah. wouldn't be enough. Good point. Me. Good point. Okay. It's any any regime change in one of your kingdoms can turn it to a republic, right? It's not just vote. It um, should be on the back of the and ruler. and and that's a good point. So uh, we haven't we haven't even talked about uh, the other the other one shots yet. But the various kinds of regime change you can target uh, empires in the stack, depending on what kind it is. You can target empires in other people's tableaus. Or you can target empires in your own tableau, which is called the straw man. Which is what I would have showed with, right. uh, with England. So yeah. vote is one way. Um, a conspiracy targeting your own, I think, turns uh, a straw man, a conspiracy against your yeah. an empire in your own tableau, turns it from a kingdom to a republic. There you go. The same is true with a peasant revolt, targeting your a kingdom in your tableau. So if you're going for that win condition... That makes right, yep. sense that you're trying to weaken yourself so that you can repress, yep. a, pr repress a lot, etc., etc. And turn it into a republic. Yep. Remember, that said, if it's a vassal that does not turn it over, that simply makes it no longer a vassal yep. and brings it up to the top level of your tableau. Um, religious wars as well. And, and, and all, Which, yeah. here we go. And so that uh, religious war, we'll cover it real quick. Religious war is one of the one-shots we did not see. Oops. And this is where the color of the pieces on the map card come into play. Actually, hold on, I want to leave this over here. Okay, yeah. But. And, and what Edward has on the screen is the back side of the rule book, which is a very handy yeah, table right. describing the different uh, regime change one shots and their effects based on different inputs. It describes who the attackers are, who the defenders are, um, and what happens given different game states in the case of that op. Cool. And so, religious war is the war, uh, it'll say on the card, it'll say in the one shot, whether it's a jihad, uh, whether it's a crusade, or whether it's a reformation. And this is where the color of the pieces start to matter. This is where the color of the pieces matter. Um, because the holy victory, and I'm going to read it because it's the most involved of the victory conditions, to win, you must have more prestige for the supreme religion than any of your opponents. Okay, stop there and uh, unpack that for folks. Okay. The supreme religion has more bishops in play, more bishops, <clears throat> excuse me, more bishops of its color in play than both other religions combined. Which right now there are zero bishops. We never saw a bishop come into play. But had <coughs> we say one black bishop, then Islam would become the supreme religion within the game for uh, thanks well, to that one bishop. Now, as soon as a red or white bishop came in, there's no longer a supreme religion. Right. It must have more than both others combined. So that's step one of the supreme religion. And more tokens of its color, its color in play in its theocracies than both other religions combined. The game starts with two theocracies, a Catholic theocracy in the Papal States and a Muslim theocracy in Mamluk. Right now, let's just say that there was a black bishop in play Oh, who knows? It, sure. Probably right yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. That's where I'd have put it. <laughs> okay. In this case, there's one black bishop. Islam is the supreme religion in the game. Secondly, there's two tokens within the Muslim theocracy versus one token in the Catholic theocracy and no Protestant uh, theocracies in the game at all. Therefore, if this were active, uh, that would make whoever has the most icons for the Muslim religion in their tableau eligible for victory, eligible to claim victory. And so those icons are here on your tableau. Well, yeah, I have so, one for Muslim. Uh, Edward has one for the Catholic. But none of the Muslims in here, I'll, I'll actually zoom out so you can see <clears throat> right. on Ash's tableau here. It's might be so we'll follow along. It's in the right dervishes there. there. There you go. It's it's the cre it's a black crescent moon icon. It's right. the oval uh, cartouche uh, that's like all the other prestige icons. Um, Dan, Mike, and I each have one icon for uh, Islam, oh, which right now is the supreme religion. And so none of us have more prestige. 
if one of us could snag a second and then claim victory, that oh, would be God. the way to claim the holy victory. There you go. Whew. <laughs> That's all. Simple, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> what was the problem? <laughs> all right. So that said, there's edge cases and minor rule um, fineries that we haven't even covered yet. Um, playing a queen that's called an old main queen, where all of her uh, all of her possible empires are already taken, it goes under your banker card, so you can still use uh, use the 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 uh, ops. The, the the prestige. Or, yeah, you right, still yeah, get yeah, yeah, you yeah, still yeah, get sorry. the benefit of You're the right, prestige. Yeah. German um, Mike has a, a good question about religious victory. Thing. All right, uh, Protestant religious victory is pretty much impossible, right? Hmm. Um, it would be really hard because you're going to have to flip some of the here and. Let me double back on this one last time. You would have to flip some of the uh, Protestant cards to right. be able to get them go ahead, the to their the theocracy. theocracy side. And so this brings us to the, all the way full circle back to the map anatomy. At the end of the name of each card, there's a ghosted icon indicating what flavor of theocracy that map card flips to if it flips to theocracy. England, and you can see right here, if you're on 1080p, go to 1080p. Uh, England flips to a Protestant theocracy, as does France and the Holy Roman Empire. Hungary and Byzantium flip to a Muslim theocracy, as do the Ottomans and the Papal States. Mamluk flips to a Catholic theocracy. Oh, too far. Oops. There we go. <laughs> Mamluk right. flips to a Catholic theocracy. Uh, for anyone uh, who knows about the Crusades or any of that dark oh. business. Oh, okay. That's why it would flip to a... I was, I was going to say, how did the Papal State flip to a Muslim theocracy? It's like counter-crusade or something. Something, yeah. Ah, I mean, it, it could have happened. Yeah. Uh, sort of alternate history. Sure. And lastly, uh, Portugal and Aragon flip to a Catholic theocracy if there's a successful religious war uh, and... The flipping of the map card is a result of a religious war um, upon that empire. Cool. So this is the epitome of, I don't need to have all the answers, I just got to know the people who do. So seriously, <laughs> Ash, thanks a lot for doing this. Today. Thanks for giving really me the chance it. to. Thank you. And um, thanks to the peanut gallery too. I saw y'all were answering questions. Yeah, and doing yeah the seriously, that's too. invaluable, especially for big, big games like this. Very tiny box. <laughs> but big game so okay so we'll start ash okay Th thoughts on the game i'm not talking tonight's game i'm talking the game itself um so uh you alluded to the fact that uh some of the players have experience in the other pack systems i don't i've only played pax renaissance i'm a history nut in, in my opinion this is the hardest of the bunch to learn so it would have been smart to you know live stream perferiana yeah. first but whatever so continue i'm sorry to interrupt um yeah I'm a history nut. Uh, this game is full to the gills, um, full to the gills up to here uh, with history, with the interactions of history, and just the way that you kind of get to play um, play God kind of above, that's uh, a bad term, um, but to get to play kind of the civilization level, um, macro, very, very strategic zoomed out, level. strategic yes. level yeah, things, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, no, strategic fine. level play of medieval Europe and... As the, as the intro says, possibly dragging medieval Europe, kicking and screaming into the modern era, or not. <laughs> uh, in Mike's case, uh, just, just cobbling together an empire. Right. Um, the, the, the different interactions of the game at seven or eight, nine now, I think, uh, plays I'm still exploring. I'm still exploring ways to uh, play the game. I've won it once out of those eight, and that happened to be a renaissance victory with republics. Um, I love how the split of the tableaus changes how you interact with your opponents. And if some opponents are full on in the East and you're not, you're simply not interacting with them. You cannot interact with them, but you can. Right. You just got to go buy those cards. So, big fan? Oh, huge fan. Absolutely. I want to keep playing. I have a copy at home. I, you know... Actually, that's not true. We're playing. We're copy. playing my copy. <laughs> um, I'm going to take. I'm going to have a copy at home here once we pack this up. Um, and I'm. Mine's downstairs. Yeah, yeah, I'm obliged to to set it up to try to explore more of the game. Right. So many of the cards get removed from the deck when you set up that the variability of the game is pretty wide. Um, so these are the ones yeah, that are go. out on the east side. There are less east side cards than the west side, but mm -hmm. oh my. 
we barely touched on the west side, the, the west possibilities side. of the west. Yeah, now, these were removed from the game before the game right. because you seed with a total of 28 cards. Uh, four per four player, players, plus yeah. 12, plus the two comets yep. and stuff. Um, to give you an idea. So, yeah. I, and that's not even bringing into play the expansion, right. too. That's Again, just the base game. Just uh, right here. So, how about you, Dan? I'm still conflicted. Huh. I've even like you mentioned a few games ago. Like I really got it. I really felt like I I knew what was going on. And then in the two games since then, even though I feel like I understand what's going on, I feel like there have been a couple. I don't know if it's bad luck or me just not seeing what's happening that have just totally shut down my game. Like when I lose my my concessions early in the game, I find it really really hard to come back from that. Okay. And I've there's still there's still points where I feel like I don't know what to do to move forward to a better position. Do you think, and again, this is coming from a what do you think, because mm -hmm. you don't know, and right. I'll be honest, I'm in the same boat as you on, yeah. in that one aspect. Do you think that's a Dan issue, or do you think that's a Pax Ren issue? And, or, or the better question is, are you interested enough in the game to want to find out if it's a Dan issue or a Pax Ren. I issue. think I am. I, w I would play it more. Okay. I would play it more, but it's it's hard for me to tell whether it's just me not seeing what to do or there being certain situations that are really really hard to extricate yourself from. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So how about you, Red Shirt Victor? <laughs> okay. So I I've, I've been putting this together since we started play this evening. Right. Um, now one nice thing is you've been quiet tonight, but yes. I notice you keep delving into. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. The player aids that we have printed out and laminated, and that's why you were able to really uh, verbalize yes. what you were able to do. Yes. Uh, this is the heaviest game we've ever played over here. Okay. By, by some margin, I think. And I, I'd like to thank Ash for yet explaining it again. You're welcome. Which, which Happily. I, gladly. Which I, I very much appreciated. And the folks in the audience, if you haven't played against these three guys... You should, so that you... This is the only group of people that I would ever consider playing this game with. Because it's got to be, from, from where I'm seeing it, it's got to be real hardcore people. Because you know, medium and lightweight gamers probably will find this very, very taxing. The state space of this game is enormous. Shoot, I, mean, you, I find it taxing. You, yeah, I do too. Yeah. I, absolutely. And, and the funny thing well, is, is, is this game this game is forty five to seventy five minutes when you're just playing, when we're playing and not yeah. live streaming and all that. Right. So so what I'm wondering in my head is you know, having said all of that, how many games does it take to get enough familiarity with each of these parallel tracks that you have to be thinking <clears throat> in your own mind about your own victory conditions? and playing your opponent's games to play defense against those victory yeah. conditions to have any level of mastery over this game. It makes me think that this might be a lifestyle game. Hmm. Good point. I, I, I feel like hmm. it... I agree with it to a point that I don't feel like it's a lifestyle game in that, like, ASL, like, if you sure. play ASL, a lot of people, that's what they play. But I do feel like if... This is one of those games that has to stay in the rotation, oh, yes. or you revert back and of you course. forget. It leeches out. Yeah. Seriously, truly. Absolutely. Again, six plays now. I think I'm at, and I'm still like, wait, okay, for a conspiracy. Yeah, right. Okay, that. Okay, so I'm looking for this, these type of car. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, I got it. What can I do? So I'm still working my way through that, and that's six plays in. Now, here's the thing. I feel like the game rewards that, and I feel like there is enough of a reward in this game mm -hmm. to warrant the work, yeah. for yeah. lack of a better way to put it, uh, that this game sure. demands of you to play reasonably well. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, so I, 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 I'm not arguing that it could be a lifestyle game. I'm just I, saying that it, it maybe not quite to that level. I It feels to me like chess, like... Four-dimensional yeah. chess. I mean, how many how many ways are you trying to hedge and push mm -hmm. in this game? It's it's enormous. I think the analogy to chess is apt, not just thematically speaking, but also um, mechanically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
As a commentary to our particular game, I'll note this is the only game I've played where an empire has not changed hands. This was a fairly yeah, static true. game it, it as was, far as yeah. our ownership of empires. Um, I was expecting at least one of us to lose an empire, and this is a game for people who you need to be comfortable losing things that you just oh, yeah. fought so hard to get. Yep. Yes. And, and turn-wise... Sure. This was a very quick, short game. This was a short game. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, comment. I'm not saying time-wise because, again, we're over-explaining. It's it's tripling the amount of time yeah. that it takes to play uh, this game. The draw decks still um, have a fair amount. So, yeah, this was this was definitely a queer duck in a sense that, like you said, that it there was were more static. No, yeah. yeah. Which this is the most that I've seen, but that also goes to show. I don't know if it's because we're on the stream, or it could be that's the way the cards, the cards came, came out. out. In addition to the way that we chose to play, chose to play it, the cards, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, the last thing I'll mention is the alternate game end condition. All right. Um, um, it's possible, especially not in our game, but in your <laughs> game, it's possible for both draw decks to be exhausted and for no victories to have been claimed. In that case, the end of the game is based solely on one's prestige in the arts. And the arts and culture prestige look like the Statue of David. Um, mm, right. there's, one on, uh, there's one in the um, Papal States Empire, there's one in the Mamluk Empire and the Hungarian Empire. They're strewn, around, they're strewn about the cards, and if that's the, end, the game end state, uh, then the game ends immediately, and that's how that's how the victor is chosen. Cool. Have determined. any of your games gone to that? Uh, no. I haven't seen that happen. Either. The funny thing is, in Porfiriana, I've seen money come into play oh, yeah. a lot more Definitely. than I would ever in this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think... So, overall, let me get your final thought. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, double back to what you were saying as far as a lifestyle game. Does this interest you, though? Within this group of people, it does. Okay. But because there there's going to be a level of proficiency that can stay reasonable. Stream notwithstanding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and German Mike can come and teach us a few things later in the week, right? Sure. So, um, it, it would it would have to stay in the rotation, and you know one 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 game a week at least. I would think. Okay. It would be frustrating to come back to this every second or third week. Uh, because I don't think much would stick. Okay. Couldn't stay sharp and yeah. 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 Hmm. All right. So yeah, thanks for sticking with us through this. Um, seriously, big thanks to Ash and to you fellas for being willing to do this. Congrats on the win, Mike. Yeah. Good job. Um, <laughs> get you next time. Thanks to everybody watching. We we genuinely appreciate it, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And this, there's a lot of stuff here, and I'll be honest. I don't know how we could have done this differently than the way we did it. Mm -hmm. um, other than maybe preceding the deck and taking staged actions and, and doing stuff like that. At that point, it would have been a demo game and not exactly. a live play. Right, right. exactly. So, yeah, um, I know we didn't talk with y'all a whole lot tonight. That's just because, it, it, honestly, the, the chat was doing a good job yeah. with that, as well as there's a we're trying to play correctly yeah. Yeah. um and just a lot going on so yeah. thanks again to everybody um if you enjoy these then subscribe down below um if you really enjoy these uh our patrons we just eclipsed 200 so thanks to all of them um honestly without them this doesn't happen uh so yeah if that's something that you want to support we definitely recommend it and appreciate it patreon.com forward slash heavy cardboard other than that, yeah, you guys heard Lignum tomorrow night and then HeavyCon off until the following yes. Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So, yes. big thanks to the Peanut Gallery and fellas. Thanks a lot again. I see all the thanks. Thanks, everyone. Y'all right. have a good night. Cool. Yeah. Say good night, y'all. Good night, y'all. Good night, y'all. Good night, y'all.